Well, I am an admirer of Elisa. Okay. Elisa has even worked for me, and the fact is, is that she is talented. What they call Carmen and friends? Carmen. And friends. Carmen. <laughs> but oh. if Carmen, you're saying like not to do. Yeah, wait, Kermit. wait. I actually have <laughs> watched a few hours of the Kermit and Friends. <laughs> How many hours have you watched, Natalie? Oh, no. <laughs> Probably indulged in eight hours. Holy! Uh, my <laughs> wife and I uh, watched. Um, uh, Benji's ex uh, girlfriends or whatever's going on. We watch this crazy podcast, and I am. I have to say, this is one of the probably in the top five things I think about right now. She has a podcast, but she gets to come on the radio. It is craziness <laughs> oh, upon craziness. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Kermit and Friends. I'm Elisa. This is Fozzy, and Kermit is watching from heaven. This is going to be a fun show today. It's a holiday weekend. I'm taking a lot of time off right now, you guys. I just want to relax. I want to go to the beach. I want to have fun, hang out with my friends. Um, we have a very big, cool guest today that a lot of people are excited about. I'd like to talk about that guest with my co-host, Wheezy. Wheezy, who's our guest today? Alex Stein, who I'm actually very excited about. I um, really? Within the last week, I just randomly started watching videos on him anyway, and I didn't know he was really? going to be a guest. And then I noticed he was following me on Twitter, so I sent him a message being like, dude, you're brilliant. And then I find out that he's going to be on here, so it just all worked together perfectly. Oh, my gosh. Like, isn't that so exciting Like when someone that you actually like follows you? Because usually it's yeah. people that you don't like, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's it's like annoying people that are trolling you. That's like your usual follow followers <laughs> yes exactly they're the ones that give you the most attention it feels like yeah you've had so much attention this week like I was kind of out of commission yesterday I wasn't around but I came back and you were fighting with people I never even heard of those people yeah it seems to me that just people want my attention so badly they'll go to great lengths to get it even if yeah. I block them or mute them they will try to get my attention and I'm just you know, some people are worth it. Like fighting with Bob was fun because Bob it was at least funny and charismatic, but it gets old after a while. Um, you know, but so, so so the people that you fought with, they're not like worth fighting with. Like, are they losers? Like, what's wrong with these people? Um, they're just like they're not worth fighting for. Like, or with yeah. well, if they were witty or funny or had any kind of substance at all, it would be fun and worth it. Yeah, but a lot of times that's not it, and they just want my attention, which I kind of refuse to give to it. But why? Point. Why do you think they want your attention so bad? I really don't know. It's confusing me. I mean, usually it's grown ass men trying to like <laughs> really get my attention, and I'm like, got... eh. <laughs> are they like gay men? You think they have a no? Crush I don't on think you? it's no. like that. I think it's just like some kind of like I, I really couldn't guess more than just like I'm a big part of the show, and a lot of the times people want to be a part of the show, but they don't know how to get on the show. Or, like Gio is a perfect example. Yeah. Me and Gio love each other, but remember we had right. a little spat 
And he yeah. came on the show and we had a little back and forth. And now he's like a bigger part of this show than he ever has been. Yeah, because and of so, his fight with you, right? Right. And I think people oh. see that and they're like, oh, okay, this is the way to get some attention. But it's Oh my gosh, that is annoying. You give somebody attention, they're being mean and they're being a jerk. And now they're bigger and more popular <laughs> than ever. <laughs> well, I love Geo, just for, so everybody knows, I really do love Geo. So I'm glad that oh, that did. worked out for us. I love okay. your patriotic... Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm having a great weekend. I have the painting that you bought me. Oh, I love it. Uh, in the background uh, by Tammy Anderson, our favorite artist. Amazing uh, YouTube channel. Incredibly talented. We support people like so that. Uh, do you have anything you want to say You know about Tammy Anderson? Tammy is amazing. I yeah. got a painting from her months ago from my mom for Mother's Day. Oh. And it was beautiful up close and impersonal. And when I saw it, I was like, this is incredible. And she's got so many followers on YouTube that it's yeah, she has over a hundred thousand followers and and people just love her and yeah. they go crazy over it. And it makes sense because she truly is the best. That's what everybody's saying. I'm just getting a phone call. Uh Kermit and Friends, how can I help you? It's Al Graham. I'm wondering if I'm going on the air today. Oh, it's Alan. Oh, it's Alan Graham. Okay, just hold on one second. Alan Graham has to say something to me. This is uh, Jim Morrison's uh, brother-in-law has something to say. Yes, uh, yes, yes, Alan. Well, you told me I was going to be on the air this morning. I just wondered what time. So you wrote to me a very nice email. You had a poem that you wrote for me, and I appreciated that. It was my birthday. I appreciate right. every... I get where this is going to go. Uh, thanks for your time. I'm done waiting around and being jerked off by you. So go fuck yourself. How's that? Put that on the air. Bye. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I actually don't, Alan. No, I have no idea. You said well, I was going to go on the air and I was going to do like we did before. And now you open up and you say all this other stuff, I asked you to let's get it on and I don't want to be in the middle of all your stupid fucking puppets and all the other bullshit jack-off stuff that you have on there, like Andy Dick going on there going, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing something serious and we offered you a chance to play in it and now you're doing it again. You're jacking me off with all this shit before. I wanted to talk about a serious thing, not like fluff, which is what you're doing. I... My friend, John Seppridge, said that he considered you a serious actress. And I said, I think you're right. So I offered you to play in a vignette with me, a 15-minute vignette where we would recreate the death of Jim Morrison. And it's got nothing to do with all this other bullshit that you put on there. This is tabloid shit. I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in serious production. We have a serious book. We have a serious subject. And if you want to play that game, don't fucking invite me because it's ridiculous to have you sit here and go, oh, my life is and this and all these people. What? Change the fucking channel. I'm not interested. Why do you keep jerking me off? Wait, so I don't get to be in that movie anymore? Well, you, you know what you're doing. Don't play fucking stupid with me. Don't, please. You're just doing... You said we're going to go on before anybody else because I didn't want to be in the middle of stupid fucking puppet talking to me right in the middle of a phrase. And you said, okay, we'll do you first. And I said, okay, now I'm sitting around. Well, Stop. that was just Wheezy. That was my co-host. He's no, on every show. Said, what you did was said, oh, I've got this guest. I and have a guest, Alex Stein. He's a huge guest. I'm really nervous, actually. Listen, I'm like freaking the, out. The people who watch me are interested in serious not fucking talking about dicks and stupid fucking mundane Howard Stern shit. They're interested in good stuff, intellectual stuff. I've got three books. I'm publishing French, English, and Spanish now. And I wanted to discuss with an intellectual audience about, I went on a psychic show the other day. We got 85,000 hits now instead of a few hundred with you. So I came back on because I wanted to say, yeah, maybe that chick could act out Pamela. Maybe she could play the, what the really, uh, what really happened to Jim Morrison. 
You think fans are interested in that? I do. I wanted to be in the movie, but I, you're not really being nice to me, so it's like um, hard to work with someone like that. Not, not being nice to you. I'm being brutal to you because you told you told me and all the people who are watching me now, and I told them tune in eleven o'clock. We're going to be on first, and instead you just put him on and said, "Well, that's this, Wheezy." This, okay, Wheezy. I don't know who Wheezy, but I know that's that. Wheezy. You can't I go know. on before Wheezy. You can't. You He's some guest who's coming up. Instead of saying I've got Alan Graham coming up, and then I wouldn't be having to sit and listen to, to your tabloid shit because I hate it, to be quite honest with you. I know you've got a few thousand viewers on this. I look at how many people it was. But for Christ's sake, I told you in a long interview, I'm sick of this shit. I wanted to be talking about serious shit. And you want to go on about tabloid, not even mention that I'm going to call. So if you think I'm going to sit here again for another hour and not be mentioned or wait around and have you jerk me off like you did last week. You knew goddamn well I was waiting in the room. You knew fucking well I wanted to get on and talk to you. But now you can go fuck yourself because I think you're an airhead, to be quite honest with you. And even though I still think you could, you still have chops because I watch you without the sound. I, and I, th I say, she's got some drama that she could do if she put her mind to it. Instead, you're doing fucking baby shit. This is dirty little boy jacking off stories in high school, titillating bullshit. You know what? Before I go, I'm going to read this beautiful poem that somebody wrote for you to maybe give you one last hint of what we think about you out here and not your silly fucking stupid calling guests. There you go. Are you ready? This is a, It's called Elisa the Lizard. In remembrance of Jim Morrison, it was written by, his name is Sir John Separate. He is a great poem, and he's one of the Caballeros de los Angeles, a goodly bunch of people who do good deeds and good works. And here it is, Elisa the Lizard. Many years of light away, a bounty land, another day. Green swamps and oaken trees, flowers sway in a gentle breeze. Under where the bats are flying, sits a little lizard crying, wielding out her restless tears to the frog that hears her fears. Bringing social problems with a local rival. When she split her guts all out, she gives the frog a face of doubt. The problems become lethargical, but to the frog, they're comical. Uh, Elisa comes, Elisa goes. And all her thoughts, the frog down knows. The frog cries unto the daffodils. He never gets the things he wills. The dills sing out to the rock, whose solemn silence seems to mock. A man comes into the forest, sees a girl, perhaps the poorest. In the grass they play and lay. Then he takes her somewhere far away. The frog who has grown pretty smart dies now from a broken heart with a thud comes down his bones, crushing the flowers into the stones. And when you practice bullshit instead of what your real potential is, good acting, you mock the face of good TV and you mock the face of good broadcasting and good literature. There are intellectual people all over the world who would listen to you and watch you do something serious. And you could kick ass on most actresses that I know, and that's the goddamn truth. So if I'm too hard for you to listen to, okay. But at least take that poem and say, somebody saw me. Somebody said, that girl could be good. That woman could be good. And you say, well, yeah, but I'd rather talk about dicks. And have Andy Dick scratching his balls on television. What a fucking mockery. You're mocking yourself, not me. And uh, I said, anyway, even this, when I when you turn me off, still might be better than what you're gonna get on, which is fluff, and you know it. Okay, our first guest today is Alex Stein. I really admire this guy. He is incredible. He made it. And I'm very impressed by his career. Uh, Primetime 99, Alex Stein is a political figure and prankster. 
and he's best known for his outlandish performances at city council meetings where he raps songs, he plays quirky characters, he's been interviewed, he's been on Infowars, Tucker Carlson, Jimmy Kimmel, he made headlines all over the world, all over the news, and he's incredible, he's our guest today, everybody welcome to the show, Alex Stein. Wow, Lisa, my heart is warm. No, seriously, you know, I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan for a long time. You're my online sweetheart number two. So I really appreciate that great introduction. And to the last guy, listen, he tried to act like he's a serious guy. He was saying some of the most disgusted, perverted things. He came on talking about fellatio and masturbation. I mean, how could anybody take him seriously? He's using his hand in a very sexual manner. That guy, he's got a few screws loose. You know what I mean? I God totally bless his soul. agree. No, I totally agree. He... I really like what what stood out to me was on my birthday and you know, he wrote me an email and he said, I wrote you this poem and, and it was that poem. And I was like, you know, I, I didn't get through the whole poem when I when it was in my email, but I read part of it. I said, this is nice. You know, this guy he wants to put me in a movie. I'm going to be playing uh, Jim Morrison's uh, girlfriend in the movie. I said, great. That's going to be so fun. You know, it's it's not often you get an opportunity like that, but I feel like I kind of blew it today with him. Oh, my gosh. That guy's movie. Oh, come on. Give me a break. You know, he's probably going to make you have a nude scene or something the way he was so sexual in that thing. I wouldn't even trust that guy. But seriously, no, it is an honor because I'm telling you, I've been a fan for a long time. I still actually go and watch a lot of those old like to this day and age. Howard, uh, the modern day Howard, I don't listen to. But the old yeah. school Howard were you with Benji, the online sweetheart, the J day. That is the best. That's the best era of the Howard Stern show that. And then the Eric, the actor, uh, John, or, you know, Eric. Those are the best. And those, you know, overlap. So those are the best. Yeah, I love like being part of the show at that time. So is that what inspired you to do what you do? Did Benji inspire you? Well, kind of, because Benji used to go to all the press conferences and be like, Eliza Jordana, you know, listen to Eliza, Lisa, excuse me. But, you know, that's what he used to yell your name. And yes, that kind right. of, in a and, and, and on God's honest truth, Benji's the funniest guy on the show. I mean, he always has so been. Yeah. One of the Okay, but this is what I have to ask you. So when he, you remember when he like dyed his beard and wore the hat? Was that all you to tell him to do it? Because he did look cool. But I'm saying, was that all you giving him the the queer eye for the straight guy makeover? Well, yeah, because I I like that look. Uh, when I met Benji, mm -hmm. he was kind of like, like I remember when we went on a date. He was so sweaty and he was <laughs> he, he was bald, which is fine. It's fine to be bald, yeah. but I just thought he'd look better in a hat. And I thought it'd be great if he wore a hat with my name on it. So that way, wherever he is, he thinks of me, people bring me up. Like, I want to be the central part of someone's life. If I'm dating them, like, I better be it. Like, they only have to think of me. And so I made that happen, you know, with Benji. At least it, I think it'd be <laughs> impossible to date you and not be the central part of their life. I mean, you have a oh. lot of uh, personality. You're beautiful and you. talented. Okay, but then, then I also got to say this. And then so when I first saw that you had the thing with Andy Dick, I was really kind of confused. But Andy Dick's a great guy. Like, after watching him on the rv he he's actually a genuinely nicest guy ever like i i'm just saying i love andy dick way more him and chicken andy i've watched hours and hours what? of them no no you're not supposed to like chicken andy Alex. no That's i don't necessarily like, like chicken andy no. but i'm saying the way that he was nice to chicken andy you know i'm just saying you, it gave him it really redeemed andy it shows that his is yeah. like that he has you know, a heart you know what i mean he's almost kind of like a fatherly <laughs> figure to him like i don't know i'm just saying i really andy dick redeemed himself he's an awesome guy I know he gets a bad rap because he's kind of yeah. controversial, but he, you can tell like it really genuinely because you know, that's how the IRL streaming is. You're just kind of, you know, you let your guard down. And he's actually a nice guy. He probably drinks too much, probably likes to party a little yeah, too much. But he, the, Andy Dick, but inside there, like when he talks about news radio and he talks about his career, you can tell that's like that's who he wants to be and that's who he is. And it's kind of sad that he's, he's left that. But he's a good guy. I really like Andy. Yeah, you would love him. I mean, he's so nice and he's so vulnerable. And what I love most about Andy is he like tells you what's wrong in his life. He doesn't try to be yeah. cool. He doesn't show off about anything. Um, yeah, he compliments people. He supports people. He supported me so much. And, and you know, just, he, he's incredible. He's an incredible person. I love him. I mean, I was at the beach yesterday with him and I ended up losing him. Like, that's the one problem when you of date course. him. <laughs> <laughs> like, I couldn't find him. He was under like a bridge or I don't know. He, he was gone. That, that happens because so many fans go up to him and he ends up with those people. Like sometimes he moves in with people that just come up to him. <laughs> and so it's yeah. hard to date someone like that. And you're getting actually a lot more famous now. Does that happen to you? Do people come up to you? Are people hitting on you? Do you have that kind of situation going now? 
Well, people are sending me nudes, unsolicited nudes, and I'm always worried. No, but it's not that good. I'm always worried they're going to get me deplatformed or it's a nude of somebody. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just always worried of what the heck they're sending me. So I don't I want to block it. I don't want to get kicked off Instagram because a girl is showing me her boobs, which I love boobs. I'm just saying I respect it. I understand where they're coming from, but I don't want to. But now that I have a big follower, I don't want to lose any of my accounts. So it's kind of stressful. Yeah. Uh no, it really is. But this is the last thing I'm going to say about Andy, though. It made me laugh yeah. so hard because Andy's <laughs> in the thing. And then somebody taught, somebody played this Norm McDonald joke. And Norm, there was a time where on Saturday Night Live, Andy Dick was there. And Andy Dick and Chris Farley went into a bathroom. And Norm McDonald's like, oh, my gosh, Chris Farley and Andy Dick went into a bathroom. He's like, God, I hope. And this is when Chris Farley was struggling with drugs. And Norm McDonald goes, gosh, I hope uh, Chris Farley did drugs. You know, it's that he didn't have sex with Andy. And then Andy, they played that clip in front of Andy, and he died laughing. So that's why I was like, oh, my gosh, Andy has such a good sense of humor he really yeah. is a man so he's funny he's really cool i just yeah. want to say that i mean even when he's drunk as drunk as can be he's still funny like he doesn't have to try to be funny every single yeah. thing he says and does is funny and it's fun like dating someone like that is very fun for me because <laughs> it's never boring i don't have to keep up the conversation he's such a great conversationalist great storyteller and that's like my ideal guy is someone like yeah. that do you look for that do you look for someone that's as funny as you are well, honestly, gosh, I'm telling you, I used to be like a serial monogamous, but ever since in the, in the past two years when I really started my YouTube and creating content, I feel so narcissistic and self-involved. It's kind of hard to date. I mean, do you not have that problem? What? Yeah. Wait yeah, a Yeah, seriously. Hold on, back up. Wait, since you've been creating content, you cannot date because you're that big of a narcissist? I just think I'm busy. I'm always editing and stuff. And so it's hard for me. You used to be when I dated, like, that's your kind of hobby. Like, that's all your free time is with, yeah. you know, with your significant other, with your girlfriend. But, like, yeah. now all my free time is like, oh, let me go travel somewhere to go provoke people. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. So I just feel yeah. like I don't have that. I, I can't give that person the attention they deserve. So that's why I feel like right now my love life is lacking. But honestly, I've had a few kind of one night stands and stuff. And since I've been famous, it kind of makes you feel scummy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, I don't feel good after a one night stand. So where did you get the one night stands? Are they at like comedy clubs? Are they? Yeah, they so much are? of the comedy club. Yes. <laughs> and then I get a lot of messages. And I mean, and then I'm getting no, I get so nervous. Even if you wear a condom this day and age, everybody has some, you know, I think it's like, you know, I'm always worried about getting an STD. Then I got to go to the STD oh, no. clinic. Then I got to get stressed. It's just not easy at this day and age. It's not easy to date and, and you know, I'm fornicate. I'm so sorry. I, Alex, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. You're so famous that you have so many worries. <laughs> No, I wish I was famous. You're, you're joking me. Hey, but you know, it's, and honestly, you know, Tucker Carlson, I just did his show, the long form of his show. Okay, who's I'm on the phone? Eric. Eric, it's Hyper Chair. Eric, hold on. Uh, yeah, Kermit and friends. I love Eric. Help. Eric's a friend of mine. You know, Eric's a friend of mine. Yeah, yes, Eric. I hear you have Alex Stein on. Yes, I do. <laughs> He's right the here. One, the one and only Alex Stein. I love this guy. Yeah, me too. He's amazing. He's a good friend of mine, Eric is. Him and if, if me and him got together a long time ago. Really? Yeah, we had lunch. We had lunch. You had lunch? Did he take did Alex take you to lunch when he was just like a regular guy? Yes. Wow. Was, did you enjoy it, Eric? Yes. Me and him went on a date before I had for lunch. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I the love TikTok that. diner. Yes, yes. And oh then he tried God. to make me go to in New York City. It, oh, Eric, call me back. Wait, it, was this in New York City? It was in New York City. So this was a long time ago. Well, it was like almost uh, eight years ago. I was on this Bravo show called uh, uh, Online Dating Rituals of the American Male. It's like this dating show where they followed us. And it was on Bravo and only aired one season. It got canceled. It was but, about your dating life? Yeah, and then some other people, they followed us online dating. It was nuts. You got to yeah. look it up. It's all online. Yeah, you got to see it. It's nuts. But but um, Eric, of course, you know, I became, I think I was Facebook friends with him. And, you know, I was like, hey, you know, I want to meet you. So we went to the TikTok diner and I ordered fish to see if he would be scared of it. He didn't even act scared. So I thought, you know, that's his whole thing. He's afraid of fish. He didn't act afraid. And then I love Eric. Good guy. He wanted to go buy pillows after. I didn't go buy him anything. But, of course, he wanted to go. He wanted me he to take him on a shopping spree. Wait, oh, he wanted you yeah, to buy he said, Yeah, he's like, hey, can we go to Target? I need some stuff for my apartment. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not buying you anything. I just bought you a $60 lunch. No, but I, I'm telling wow. you, I love the Howard Stern universe, whatever you want to call it, the universe of Howard. Okay. I mean, it, it's my whole childhood. I mean, and I'm not not just my childhood, but I mean my adulthood too. I'm just saying, like Howard for me was like that was that was it. That was the end all be all of content. Oh, no, you know, 
best ever. Yeah. I mean, you can't really argue that too much. Um, no, I know. Incredible. I know. But that this is the thing, though. It's like, you know, I kind of like the now I love like Ronnie and I love Shirley and I love like all the cast and characters. But the but, you know, now the show is unlistenable. I mean, I know you don't want to talk bad about it because he <laughs> likes you, but it's just I just no, can't believe he's. It's, <laughs> so why do you. um so, so what do you think went downhill, like, about the Howard Stern show? What, what was lost? you think it's just that he's older? No, no, it's a Marcy Turk, I believe. When she came on, and then he came, he got all these guests. Like, he got rid of Gilbert Gottfried. He stopped having him on. And then, like, he used to, like, bully Benji for being late. That was the best content ever when Benji ran in late. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and it this was is, good. And this is for me, too. It's like, Artie obviously is a train wreck, but like when Artie like hurt himself and then they wouldn't talk about it, there's like this big elephant in the room. And yeah, I just I, feel I like- don't like that. I, I like to know everything, like even with friends or whoever I'm dating or what I'm listening to, like I want to go deep. I do not like the superficial conversations. Like I want to know exactly what's going on mm -hmm. and I don't want them to hide anything from me. And uh, yeah, that is upsetting when I like with Benji. Like they they really just like bully him a lot, you know, and 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 there's yeah. so much so many deeper, more interesting things that they could talk about rather than his weight, and that's what really bothers me about him is they just go after his weight, his his you know what, what he looks like only, and I feel like he has so much more to offer than that. Yeah, Benji's hilarious, like all yeah. his quirkiness and stuff. <laughs> that's what makes him cool because yeah. he doesn't try to be like fit into, you know what I mean? He's not corporate. He's not trying to fit in. That's why I think Benji's so cool. Like when he wore the dashiki, that was even before you ever met him. That was one of those famous episodes. He wore like an African dashiki and then acts because he's like me. Like I get my Andy Kaufman ask from Benji, you know, or he's playing a bit, but he he plays it so you know so straight that you would never know. That's why I love him. That's why I love Benji. And then you know. He, Benji and you, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm really a fanboy of yours, uh, Elisa, because like I said, you were on the era, the best era, kind of the last era of Howard Stern when it was good. And now it's just got, like I said, it's not the same show that it was when you were on there. Was that like 2012? When did you kind of stop? When did you move to L.A. around then, 2013? Um, so it was from like, I was on the show from like 2010 to 2015, yeah. Um, yeah, but I I enjoyed it so much, and and I was just curious. How did you know about like the Marcy Turk thing? Like, because that, that's not really brought up that much. Like, how did you get that insight? Are you do you have an insider in there? Kind of. Well, I'm friends with Shuli. I mean, he didn't necessarily say that, but I am friends. I've been on I've been on Shuli's podcast, and he kind of talked about how you know his you know to to spill some inside baseball. He didn't really like it how she said that they all should dress better, and he kind of liked wearing you know t shirts and shorts, you know. And so like yeah. just the corporate the corporate structure of these guys are like you know Sal and Richard were literally like masturbating in their booths and like <laughs> you know and doing all this yeah. weird stuff. And when she got there, she just kind of cleaned things up. Which that's the thing is people don't realize when Howard did America's Got Talent and he got that mainstream success. He wanted to keep that. You know what I mean? He realized, he realized, oh man, I can be liked by, it's kind of like what Donald Trump did. Like Donald Trump is crooked as it comes, but that's why he, he wanted to be liked by the left. These people that are like big, huge celebrities like that, they don't want to be hated by one side. Yeah. And I think when Howard, when Howard started getting that mainstream acceptance, he didn't want to throw it away. He didn't want to go back to like his old tricks of the porn stars and throwing baloney on girls' butts, but that's what made him so cool. So it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that that, but that happens to everybody. I mean, I guess you get, yeah, we should, we would make a very sophisticated couple. We got, when I'm in LA, I hope, I hope I ended up mad. We'll go, we got to go get dinner. You know, he doesn't even realize what I'm up to, but, um, so, so, okay. So you, you, you're a big Howard Stern fan. You don't listen now, but you were inspired by it. You know, do you get nervous when you do these stunts, when you go in and you, you interrupt, you're interrupting things a lot. So you're going into press yeah. conferences and you're going places and, and really, and do you have like, like, what is your purpose for it? Are you just trying to be funny? Are you trying to like send a message to people? Like, what is your purpose? Well, a little bit of both. Okay. So, so honestly, Elisa, like I stopped drinking. So I worked for the TV show cheaters. It's a TV show where we catch people cheating on their husbands and wives for yeah. a long time. And then the guy who was the host, his name was Clark Gable. He's Clark Gable's grandson. He actually died of a fentanyl overdose. So I'm just giving you kind of my long story short. And then they, he was my good friend. It made me really sad. And I quit drinking. Oh. I quit using all drugs. I totally changed my life. But at that same time, they said, Alex, you're going to be the next host of the show. And I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to be hosting a show. It's distributed by Viacom. I want to make good money, this and that. And then yeah. when it came time to hire me, they hired this guy named Peter Guns, who is like this DJ out of New York. He's like in his 50s, which is totally different than me. The reason why I bring that up, it's like, and like they went with kind of more of like, you know, uh, 
you know, I guess more of an affirmative action pick, not in a bad way, just, you know, kind of a different than the 30 year old white guy, the last host that we had. And so I, that's when I quit and I started my own show. And that's when I started creating my podcast. And I started going to these meetings, uh, Elisa, being serious, being like, why are you guys doing this? You know, what's going on? I don't like they closed the public restrooms at the park and they closed the water fountain. So like when I walk my dog, the water fountain didn't work. You know, they have these cool water fountains. You press a button, they have like a dog bowl. Uh-huh. And I'm like, how does this stop the spread of anything? You turning off the water fountains. Uh-huh. So they looked at me like I was an idiot. And then once I went in there and then one of the first times we have this guy named Mayor Johnson, I said, hey, Eric Johnson, you should go in the community and give free Johnson and Johnson's from Mayor Johnson because the gay community would love the double entendre. And since you're the first gay mayor of Dallas, they would love that. Well, he's not the first gay mayor. He's married with kids. And he was like shook because this is on Zoom. You can see all their faces. And I was like, oh, wait, now I got a joke. Now I got a troll. And then it was kind of off to the races. And I started getting progressively crazier and crazier and crazier. Yeah. And that's why it's, it's like w- what I use my humor, though, is, is to answer your question it's called culture jamming i don't necessarily want people to see like people say oh alex you're conservative really i'm in the middle but what i'm oh, trying to I say is you were. when you said you didn't like donald trump i was actually surprised by that well i mean i'm just kind of mad about yeah. what he did the end of his presidency he didn't let julian assange out of jail and he basically gave him the WikiLeaks. there's just a lot of problems with with uh donald trump that kind of made me just lose a little respect for him did but this is what but this donald is trump? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I voted did. for him over Joe Biden. Yeah. But but this is this is what I'm saying is it's called culture jamming, Elisa, is, is where I'm taking the most absurd parts of our culture. And that's why I make fun of like all the far right stuff, kind of QAnon stuff too. And I jam it in people's faces to try to bring awareness to them. Like I don't necessarily want to convince you to be on my side, but I just want to make you think, is this real? Is this fake? Like Andy Kaufman would do. I want to I want to go to a meeting and I want to be like, is this guy serious? And then they had to do a little research and they had to figure out. And what that does is that turns on the part of their brain. You know, you have alpha waves or beta waves. I want to turn on the part of your brain that makes you think. I just want to make people think. Okay. And, and you really love that. And you've been successful in it, I think, because I, I look at your comments on your channel and everything, and people are just so into you and you're, you're doing it in a way where people are understanding you better because it could be confusing and to do yeah. it with humor is just perfect. Uh, so I, I love what you're doing. I watched you with uh, Chrissy Mayer uh, last night. Is that a friend of yours, Chrissy? Oh, yeah, very good friend. Yeah, I love Chrissy. I was just in New York with her. And, you know, I just got protested in New York. Did you see that clip? I had 15 no. Antifa. So I was at a I was at a charity event for uh, Robert Kennedy. It's Children's Health Defense. And I was a headlining comedian, and we sold it out. And wow. 20 Antifa, it's like 15 to 20 Antifa came and protested me. Uh, and they said that I'm a transphobe because I went and I went in a, and I went to a meeting in a bathing suit in a women's bathing suit. And I said, I said, why won't you let me change in the women's locker room? Why won't you let me swim against the women? And so they called me transphobic, but I'm not transphobic. I love the gay community. I love I actually get crushed by my conservative viewers because I'm not anti-gay enough because I'm not. I have gay family members. Like, I don't even want to cons- – I know gay people exist, and I believe they have the right to exist and live a life free yeah. and do whatever they want but a lot of people like that's the problem is that that there's like this far right thing where they really think you know all gays are bad and there's this far left thing where they think all conservatives are nazis so it's like there's somewhere in the middle we have to meet and that's where i try to that's where i try to sit and that's where i try to wake people up to the middle are just so like one-sided i feel like it's it's they aren't in the middle like that i mean most people i know are either very very far left they're very very far right especially recently um, you began to become very big during the pandemic, right? Is that when you really started yeah. to blow up? Well, that's what that's what happened. So, like yeah. April 2020 is when they when they hired the other guy, and that's I started my show May 20th of 2020. And like I said, that's when I really started creating content. I started my podcast. I started interviewing people. I started going to these meetings, and and that's why it's like I'm sure you've been successful. How much joy has your show brought you? Oh my gosh, everything, everything exactly. In my life. Everything in my life is because of this show. Every friend, every date. I got engaged because of the show. Andy, I met him because I was interviewing him. I mean, it's given me so much. I can't imagine anything giving me more. I know. I bet you're just mad you didn't start it sooner, right? That's what I feel like. I well, wish I would have started my show even sooner. So the reason why I did it, uh, Alex, is because I was in so much pain. I had no choice. Yeah. So I was really what sad. Do you mean? Well, okay, so I was really sad um, at the time. I My dog Kermit died, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, I didn't want to live. Like, I didn't even want to, like, outlive my dog. You know, I, I couldn't imagine wow. my life. And I was so just close with her. She was my best friend. I was. She was just everything to me, everything. And I, I was so sad. I would go to, like, different uh, churches. I just needed anybody's help, like, anyone. I was desperate. 
and I would go to these these churches, and and this one church refused to baptize me. Um, what? They, yeah, yeah. This Culver City church, I'll call them out. They, but they, you're they, Jewish, though, right? And then they I see. I see. I'm Stein, and I was baptized. I that's I'm, I would consider myself a Christian. I was baptized, and everyone's like, "You're a Jew," but really, I was baptized. Okay, so you're so you're like are a you Jew half, for Jesus. Are you half Jewish? Well, I mean, technically, yeah, my grandfather's Jewish, but I never met him. I never knew him. He wasn't in my life. So I was raised Christian. But, hey, you oh, know, okay. Stein, obviously, I'm pretty Jewish. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I, I've been to, like, the Kabbalah Center for six years. I was just looking for answers and looking for help and being connected with people. So this one church said I wasn't close enough to God, and they were really mean to me, and I wanted to be baptized, and, and they didn't baptize me. And I said, I want to start something where everybody's accepted any like political background, any religious background, any race, and you just love everybody, even if they're bad, even if they're trolls, even if they like call me a cunt, I still accept them. And <laughs> it's like close to like what Jesus, you know, I, I, I say, you know, what would Jesus do in this situation? Would Jesus ban this person or would he give them even more love? So that's what I tried to do here just because I was in so much pain and it's given me so much joy and it continues to. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm obsessed with this more so than anything else. Yeah. And that's, that's the same thing with me. Like when I started creating content and making my show, it just, it just really brings you a lot of joy and it's crazy. I would never thought it, like I said, the only complaint is I wish I would have started earlier. Um, and so that's other people out there. Like, and I appreciate you, you platform a lot of other people that want to get into streaming and want to want to get into it. So that's why I think you're, you're spreading that positive energy. And that's why it's like, we live in this, well, I call it like low vibrational or high vibrational. And this is the thing is people that are like low vibrational, they want misery loves company, but what you do having a show you're being high vibrational you're being positive you're you know joking you have all kinds of walks of life and so that attracts more high vib high vibrational people and it gives you joy it makes you less depressed people don't realize that yeah i mean i think of it this way when you build something when you're creative that's like what god is god created everything and mm -hmm. if, the more you're acting like god the more happy you are so I'm happiest when I'm creating, when I'm sharing with others. That's it. So Kermit and Friends is like the epitome of that because I'm being creative and anybody that wants to promote anything on here, I, I do it. And if I can help anybody, you know, I make sure that happens. So it's just, it's just wonderful for me. I'm so, are people asking you for advice? Like are people writing to you saying, how do I do what you do? Yeah, all the time. And that my favorite thing, the favorite compliment I get is when somebody's like, you know, Alex, I went and I spoke at my, you know, city council meeting. I went and I spoke at my school board. That's what I try to do is I want to encourage other people to speak up because nobody's going to speak up for you. You know, and, and I go and I, I started speaking seriously and then I started trolling, kind of doing the Benji Bronx. But I'm saying people should go speak up seriously because it actually does have an effect because these politicians, I'm telling you. They all are so self-righteous. It doesn't matter if they're a city council member or a congressman. They all think they're so important. And they're just like you and me. They're not any better than us, but they act like that. So we kind of need to we need to call these people out for being so self-important, for being, you know, treating us like we work for them. When in reality, the politicians work for us, but that's not how it usually works out. And um, you mentioned Tucker Carlson before. I was I was watching an interview with you last night. You became close with Tucker Carlson. He never texts or talks to guests. This is what I heard. I heard Tucker Carlson, yeah. he, because he, Howard Stern does this too, where he doesn't talk to anybody. He has like a wall between him and everybody else. And you're not even allowed mm -hmm. to look at him. And I think Tucker Carlson is similar, but with you, Tucker Carlson is texting you. What is what is going on with that? Well, I'm baby. He's my biological father, so he has to do that. <laughs> he doesn't want to get in a court case and get sued. No, but just, Tucker likes my humor. That's the only reason. Yeah, he texts me, and I have his number, and the producers there like me. I just think he Tucker actually has a genuine sense of humor. That's why he's a top-rated cable guy, because a lot of those other guys at Fox, you know, that's why it's like, you know, I obviously like Fox because Tucker's on it, but some of those guys are annoying at Fox. You know, I don't even want to name names, some of those big yeah. broadcasters. And then a lot of them are annoying at CNN. So I'm just saying, it's kind of similar to the politicians. A lot of these, a lot of these like uh, broadcasters, they're very self-important. Tucker's not. He's not like Howard. He's down to earth. Oh, he Give is? me his number. Yes. He's eating sandwiches, being relaxed. Like, I'm just saying, you know, when he, he invited me up to his studio in Maine, we did the long form of his show and that'll be coming out in a week. Um, cool. And I'm just saying he couldn't be more down to earth, couldn't be more jokey because this is what happened. So I had a viral video where I called out Dan Crenshaw and Dan Crenshaw is a congressman that is like just given, you know, all this money to Ukraine and he likes all these red flag gun laws and all this stuff. You know, some people on the left would like him, but he considers himself a conservative. So, 
and and he got mad at these women uh these well, these ladies complained about the baby formula shortage and he said you know anybody that complains about the baby formula shortage is a puppet for putin so tucker carlson called him eye patch mccain that was his joke you know making fun of john mccain because he's kind of a globalist he's not america first so then i went and i called dan crenshaw out i called him eye patch mccain and went viral it was like this huge story and I was worried because Tucker invited me on a show uh, before that. And then, you know, it happened like that weekend. And when I first met Tucker, I was like, Tucker, you know, I was so worried you weren't going to have me because all these articles were saying Alex Stein's radicalized by Tucker Carlson. Alex Stein's radicalized by Tucker Carlson. And Tucker goes, I'm happy I radicalized you. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so, cool. It's so cool because Tucker has a sense of humor and he knows it's all the media is just, you know, obviously exaggerating. You know, he didn't really radicalize me. He's just <laughs> – being funny and I'm using some of his bits, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, there are some good people in the media and Tucker Carlson, I promise you guys is one of them. Okay. What about uh, Alex Jones? I love Alex. Alex is a man. Yeah. Do you like Alex? You need to get on Alex's show. I need to get you on Alex. Yes. Yeah. He would love to have you on. I guarantee he would have you on. All right. Yes. Oh my gosh. I need to, I'll connect you with the producer. So, so do you like, do you ever watch Alex's show? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've watched it. I, a lot of people that like Kerbin and Friends actually like watch, you know, Infowars. And I have a lot of conservative fans. I, I, have, I used to have what? a guy named Trumpster Bob. Well, this is the thing is, is uh, this is what he talks about. And like you talk about the people right now, you have the massive inflation. You can hardly like afford to go to the grocery store. You have gas prices. It's like where you're at in California. I think it's like six bucks a gallon. So yeah. people are really hurting right now. So it's not even about like conservatism. People on the left, like when I do man on the street, bitch, you ask them like, do you miss Trump? A lot of people say they miss Trump. But I, I guess my point being is that Alex Jones, is he's, he's not even um, – right or left obviously he leans right but he's anti-establishment and so what my point being is even people on the left that we're anti-establishment it doesn't matter if you're a right wing or left wing both wings are on the same bird and all they care about is controlling us so i think alex jones is one of the first people because he used to go after george bush alex jones used to crush george bush you know for going to war and never finding the weapons of mass destruction because we saw we had a 20-year war elisa and you know we never found anything in Iraq or Iran, no, no ability to make nuclear bombs. And they killed over a million Muslims. And so Alex Jones, you know, he called that out. So it doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to be a conservative to realize the government doesn't have our best interest. Yeah. And you're, you're very passionate of talking about this. This is so great. I love seeing somebody so passionate. <laughs> you love talking about politics. I mean, do you talk about this with your friends or your family? Are you talking about this all day? <laughs> No, my dad hates it. Oh my God, I can't talk about it at all. My, and my dad, he, and this is the other thing is you'll love this. So I'm super close to my dad and all of his friends, all of them, all of his friends watch Tucker and stuff. I'm like, oh, we saw Alex on this. We read it. We read about him. And my dad's like, oh, my son's an idiot. He calls me Mo Ron. Like he hates it. You know, he does not like oh, really? it. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. So no. Like maybe functions, family functions are awkward sometimes, like at parties. Does it no. Get awkward? No, not even because my dad and I are so close, but like I'm suing the county judge. And what happened was, is so I went to go speak and our county judge, he got arrested in college for steal for breaking into a girl's dorm room and stealing her underwear during a panty raid in college. And so I brought up the D magazine article about that and he didn't kick me out of the court, but his right hand man kicked me out of court and it was an unlawful removal. So I'm suing the county judge and they already want to settle. So I'm already about to get paid by Dallas County. It's a yes, because they, I was unlawfully removed. They don't wow. really, yes. Yeah. But my dad didn't want me to sue him and i got a rabbi attorney out of out of uh, baltimore maryland who's a good friend of mine john gross he's an awesome guy he's like kind of like my second dad now a third dad behind my dad and tucker so he's my like my third dad and i'm saying my dad was like please don't sue this county please don't sue the county and now the county already wants to settle so just because my dad doesn't agree with me you know you don't see eye to eye with your parents on a lot of stuff but no, he supports me anything. but yeah of course <laughs> okay you know what i mean because i'm his idiot son so he's never gonna he's like you're gonna sue the dallas county and now they already want to <laughs> settle so now he's kind of changed his tune are you gonna get a lot tune. of money or are you gonna get a lot of money from that I'm I'm asking for 120,000 so I will get a little right. less than that. Yeah. And I'm going to donate part of it to charity. You know, I'm a cat lover so I'm going to donate it uh, uh yes to a, you know a good cat charity here in Dallas. I have cats everywhere. I got my dog but I don't want to wake up Skybear. He's asleep under my computer. But yeah, so so I don't want to and that's the other thing is um, 
I know like you got to have money and I know you, you appreciate the support, but it's like, I know a lot of wealthy people and I know you lot know a lot of famous people that have a lot of money and that are miserable. Like Howard yeah. Stern has all the money in the world. He's probably miserable. So yeah. I, I guess my point being is that's one of the other things I try to talk about is like materialism. When we put our ego into inanimate objects, that's one of the worst things we, we should do. You're like, because an inanimate object goes obsolete. You buy this new car, you feel so good. Then you get a scratch on it and you're like, Oh, oh my God, I was scratching my car. And it actually affects you. We shouldn't do that. Like we need to, try to not be motivated by money we need to be motivated by love and and what, yes. what actually gives us joy but a lot of people they don't they don't have that mindset you know so are you somebody that's looking for love now yeah i am i'm, I'm right. wide open now send the ladies here but like i said do you not do you not i mean it's just hard to freaking date because I don't have time to go out on dates. I don't have time to go on trips with girls. Like that's kind of my favorite thing to do is travel with a girlfriend. Uh, and so I just need to, I need to get back on that. But, but right now, so I, I got signed with the blaze. That's like a conservative media company here in Dallas. And I have a show that I'm planning on coming out and in, in around August. So I'm just so busy getting all this. It's going to be like a late night show, kind of like a conservative version of like Eric Andre show mixed with Jimmy Kimmel show type stuff where I'm going to go on the street and do stuff. So, so I'm just so busy. I know that's not an excuse, but I'm telling you, I am so freaking busy. So it's hard, you know? Yeah, no, I can see that. What does like a typical day look like for you? Are you doing videos every day? I'm usually filming some sort of content every day. I mean, I wake up usually at eight and I will go walk my dogs. I walk my dogs every day and that's like an hour and a half. I walk them around the lake. And then, you know, like I said, I used to do a live stream every day, but I've been I've been slowing down the live streams because because I'm about to have a show on the blaze. I don't want to risk getting any sort of strikes. I've had strikes in the past. Oh, so yeah. you just have to be very careful. So I'm like, I'm just kind of waiting because now I, I'm going to be on YouTube there and it's, you know, Blaze TV. It's on, you know, Roku and Fire Sticks and stuff. You can watch it on your TV. But I'm saying I'm just trying to be a little more careful. But that's why I'm creating the content where I'm always going to protests. I'm traveling. I'm going to city council meetings. I try to create content where I can post something at least once every other day. Um because that's what it brings me joy. So at least I don't want to get all sad. I lost my mom in October, uh, October 25th, 2021 recently. And, uh, and I've really gone super viral since then. And I miss her every day. So for me, um, it's the only thing that brings me, it kind of distracts me is when I can create content. It makes me not think about her. It makes me not sad. So that's really why I've been like kind of also unavailable uh, to women because I'm so depressed, I'm, but I'm not the normal type of depressed, like, like a chemical imbalance. I just, I can go and I can open my drawer and I'll have my mom's something in there and I'll just see it and I'll start crying. Or like I open my closet, and I have some of her old purses, you know, some, some of the stuff I didn't donate and I'll smell my mom and it makes me cry. So I'm just emotionally fragile because I lost the person I love the most in the world. So for me, the creating content, it's like my distraction. So I've thrown myself headfirst into it and that's why I've had success and there's no looking back. Like I'm just going to keep grinding because it's, it's my main distraction. Okay, so did that happen out of nowhere? Were you was she sick? She got COVID. She got COVID, and she was she was a little overweight. She had breathing problems, and then they gave her um, remdesivir, and she died five days later. And I'm actually suing Baylor Hospital because they gave it to her without my authorization. So I'm not going to win that case. I'm more just doing it out of you know respect to my mother. But yeah, no, no, this whole this pandemic, everyone's like, oh, Alex, you know, you've blown up since the pandemic. It's not been worth it. I mean, the the loss of my mother, I would trade all the success I've had to bring her back, but that's just not the reality in which I live in. Sadly. And, and were you able to see her? I was with her every day. I was with her every day. It was the worst thing in the world. I mean, it was watching my mom die in slow motion was, I mean, I'm not trying to get all low vibrational. I hate talking about it, but I know you're I a very emotional person. I know you don't care, but it's just, that's kind of the, the harsh reality. And there's other people that have lost people during this pandemic. So I don't want to like, I don't know, just try to make people feel sorry for me. I hate when people have sympathy for me. I hate that. Like, do not feel sorry. Do not cry for me, Argentina. But at the same time, no, my life is really, really tough. Uh, just because I miss her. I mean, I, I miss her so much. And just she was my biggest fan. And like I just said, my dad loves me, but he doesn't like any of my crap. <laughs> I'm laughing. Really? Just, yeah, oh, my dad said to stop going to meetings. He's like, please go stop going to these those stupid meetings and going crazy. Yes, wow, yeah. That's cool. Like yeah. upsetting that's you're doing so well and i'm sure you want him to be congratulating you and happy for you 
Yeah, but it's different. It's different. Like, my dad supports me no matter what, but it, he just can't see the vision. You know what I mean? He's not a creator. He doesn't even know what a podcast is. And now he's seeing all my success, and he's kind of, like, still confused by it. He's like, wait, why are all these people? Why do people know you? Why are my friends calling you and asking me to come to their restaurant, come to their place? <laughs> like, uh, where I got my LASIK. I got my LASIK, and this guy, he does a lot of the Dallas Cowboys LASIKs, and yeah. he has, like, their names on the wall. And then he put a picture of me after my Tucker Carlson appearance. The guy put a picture of me at his office. And this is a dog. Doctor friend of mine, my dad's like, what? You my my buddy, my, you know, uh, Doctor Carter put a picture of you as one of my notable clients. My dad couldn't believe it. So that's so cool, yeah. though. He's got to be impressed yeah. by that. I'm sure he's proud. Maybe he just doesn't know how to show it. He's proud. He is proud. He is proud. But he just, like I said, he doesn't get the vision. He doesn't get me calling out politicians. Like he's just like, yeah. you should be kissing politicians' butts. And that's what everybody else says. And we got to stop doing that. We and my mom was vaccinated. We got to, you know, we got to really stop, uh, you know, kissing politicians' butt and calling them out. Somebody asked about that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. People are very opinionated on the whole vaccination thing. So, so what did you? It's mom so safe, and effective. Everybody get it for the YouTube. We love your Fauci, Ouchie. Get all your boosters. Yeah. Get as many as you can. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Doctor Fauci. You're the best. Um. So, 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 what did your mom say about what you were doing? Because she got to see you before you blew up, right? And she saw. Yeah. Did she see that show that you had on Facebook? Like, what, what did she watch of yours? Yeah, she watched every episode. I mean, she's the one who bought me this mug. This is my Conspiracy Castle mug. I'm just saying, she oh. bought me. She was the first person to buy my merch. She watched every show. That's what I'm saying. It makes me sick, Elisa. She was my, I mean, she was my number one fan. And that's why it's like, I just, and I, and everybody's like, oh, your mom's on the other side helping you. And my mom probably is. Cause now, like I said, I, I've been, you know, I've like had a lot of success, but it's just, I mean, every day I wake up and I think, oh my God, I miss her. And I don't get to see her. Cause I remember crying after I went on Tucker Carlson. I remember just bawling, crying, thinking I can't. My mom doesn't get to see this. And like, it just made me sick. It just, yeah. it just made me, it still makes me sick thinking about it right now. Yeah. I'm an only child too. Oh, I'm an only are? child. Yeah. So I don't have any brothers or sisters and I just, I took care of my mom. So this is really tough. Life is not easy. Um, and it's not easy for anybody else. Like I know people are struggling right now and now I'm kind of doing well financially. My YouTube page is taking off. I signed a deal with the blaze. So now I have some money and everybody else right now is like, you know, struggling. So it's just kind of, I just, even though my life's tough, I really have a lot of empathy for the other people that are struggling because it kind of feels like 2008. You remember 2008? How you yeah. were in New York during Occupy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I've been through a lot also uh, recently. I mean, I just try to live day by day, uh, Alex. If I just think of like, you know, like years at a time, it's too like overwhelming for me. So I'm just like, I'm just trying to have a happy day today. Yeah. And, uh, I, like when I think of, you know, someone that I've lost, um, I just think, I, I always think they're kind of watching me and looking out for me. Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel like that at all? A little bit, but then I have this weird thing. I 100% believe in God, but this, I also feel, this is this weird thing. I can't even believe I'm admitting this. I always like feel like, like, like there's always like a bug on me or something like a, like, a, you know, what is it? What are those called? Like uh, sometimes I'll like a ladybug or something and it'll yeah. like come on me. I'm like, is this my mom? I know that's weird. Like I always feel like, you know, it's something weird like that. Like, it's just like, I'm like, is this my mom? Or I get a, a butterfly or something like that. I'm like, is that my mom? It's weird. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I do feel like my mom's here, but I just, I don't know. I just, it's just really hard. It's just, mm -hmm. I, you have these weird thoughts. You're like, Oh gosh, I hope she's here. I hope she's here with me. Uh, but it's brought me closer to God and it's made me fearless. Like I was on Gavin McInnes' show. Gavin's a good friend of mine now. And and he said this, and Alex Jones both said this. I was on the show recently, and and I obviously I don't agree with this. Or I mean, I guess I agree with this, but I don't like this. They said, Alex, the biggest thing happening happened. The biggest thing that could happen to you is you losing your mom because it made you fearless, and it did. Because now I yeah. feel like I have nothing to lose. I can exactly. I can walk into any room. Well, this is the thing: is I can walk into any room, no matter what, and I don't feel nervous because I remember walking into that hospital, being so scared, you know, watching my mom die. And I remember thinking, there's nothing, there's no room I'm ever going to walk in that's as scary as this room. So now I am fearless. Now I can walk into a room of a million people or a bunch of city council members or whatever. And I'm like, this is not even one one thousandth as hard as when I had to walk into that hospital and see the nurses and have to help my mom change her catheter. So yeah, it's given me this like chip on my shoulder that's made me like a, the homeless man is the scariest person because they have nothing to lose. I'm in that sense. I have nothing to lose. I mean, except for my cats. God, I don't ever want to lose them. But literally, I mean, you know, my dad and my cats and my dog other than that i you know i got nothing to lose so that's why i think i'm i'm uh, i can i'm fearless 
So are you not afraid of dying anymore? Well, and not really. I mean, I definitely don't want to die, but I mean, I, I Yeah. just realized that it's a hard realization that, that our life is finite and you don't think that you think like, Oh, I'm going to live forever. But like seeing how fast my mom went, it's kind of like, wow, this is, this is just life like that. It goes right in front of your eyes and we don't know when we go out. So that's why I'm trying to grind. That's why I am so busy. That's why I'm trying to create content because you know, one day I'm not going to be here and I do want to leave my legacy. Like I look at this guy, Rich Piana. He was like this bodybuilder that's kind of a meme. And he was just this wild guy. It's hard to explain, but like his content is still viral today. And he, he's been dead for like four years. And in my mindset, that's another thing. Like, hopefully I don't die anytime soon. I'm just saying, I want to leave this legacy. Even if it's online, when I go away, I want maybe hopefully I'll have kids or friends or family. They can go back and they watch all the stuff I did. And they're like, man, that guy was like Andy Kaufman Jr. That guy was like Benji Bronk. You know, that guy was, he was a cutting edge. He was different. Yes, And that's they what I will. want people to remember. They will definitely think that they will definitely you are leaving a mark. And I think, you know, I think everyone should try and do that, you know, even if it's in a smaller way than, than you. Um, I believe everybody should try to make a mark like I don't talk to uh, my brother, right? My brother doesn't talk to me. And I just always think like he has kids and I want them to like know who I am. And I'm not allowed. Yeah. To, I'm not allowed to see them. But if I could just if they could watch Kermit and friends like they could have a pretty good idea of what I'm about. So that's Yeah, that's and so what I think. so but what's the deal? So does he live in New York or where does he live? Does he not live near you? Uh, he lives in uh, Tennessee, but uh, he does not talk to my sister or me. And his his wife really like hates us and and like separated. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I knew his Life kids. see life's hard. And that's Yeah. the other thing is people don't realize everybody has some sort of crazy family thing. That's why it's like when I see a lot of people on the conservative side, like, oh, I hate gay people or they say something like that. It makes me sick because you probably have gay family members. You have like and, and we fight with our family. I guess I guess my point being, it's like everything is really complicated. Life has a, so much nuance, but Yes. people don't want to people don't want to understand the nuance of stuff. They don't want to say, oh, you have a bad relationship with your brother, but you don't know the weird stuff that caused it. Like it's just life is very difficult. For It all is of us, not we're for all everybody. trying our best. You might Yeah. look at Alex, you know, and say, oh, my gosh, this guy is such a success. He's so happy. But he, everybody has I'm struggles. not. <laughs> no. I'm not. I mean, I mean, I'm happy. I mean, it goes in waves. Some days I'm so happy. I get to go do experiences that I would have never thought was possible. But then I got to come back and realize I don't get to share it with my own mother. Sorry to yell, but I'm just saying. So if there's a lot of stuff. where nobody's life is perfect. And this is the other thing that people need to realize. Comparison is the thief of joy. So when we compare our lives to other people, that's Yes. the first, that's the first step in making you hate yourself. Do not do that. You have your own journey. It doesn't have to be like anybody else's. So stop comparing your life to other people. And I'm telling you, your life will get a lot better. That I think that's good advice. Let's take some questions from Andy Dick. Please. Kermit and friends, how can I help you? Why, hello, <laughs> it's your boy. hey, Andy. I'm on with Alex Stein. With who? With Alex Stein, remember I told you about him? He's a guest on the show today. He's amazing. He's huge on YouTube. He's on Tucker Carlson. He's on InfoWars. He's all over TV. He's blowing up right now. He's getting a TV show. Remember when I said that? You said, oh, well, I have TV shows. Remember? I love Andy. Yeah. Tell Andy I love him. He loves you. What? Are you are you on the you're on the show? Yes, it's Kermit and Friends. It's on the same time every week. And you're part of it. Oh, I I uh just woke up from a nap and well discombobulated. But Okay. how so the show's doing great today? Yeah, we have a very nice guest. Jimmy Rizzo, you're on next. Just chill. Um, yeah, uh, we're having a great show. We have an amazing, incredible guest that's inspiring people. And he's getting a TV show. And he, he's all over the internet. His YouTube channel. Just, do you want to come on the show, Andy? What are you doing? Okay. Well, I think we're going over there. Over where? To your place to grab the, the backpack. I can't give you the backpack right now, Andy. I'm in the middle of Kermit and Friends. <laughs> Andy! I, I, I We love you, Andy! <laughs> wait, I, MTV Andy, Andy! Andy It was was the best! Step yeah, back, I know, step but the thing back. is, we got into a fight this Step. morning. Andy was very mad at me, Andy, right? Because I, you were left on the beach, but there's a reason why you left on the beach is because you went with three guys that were young surfer guys. I didn't go anywhere. No, because you 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 ignored me on the beach and you went with those guys. That's why No, that's why I have your backpack me, right now. me and you sat down, watched some gymnastics, and there was guys next to us. And when I started talking to them, you left. Uh, yeah, And because then I'm I, sick of you I immediately, leaving me for guys within that are minutes, like that. <laughs> within minutes, I went down to the beach to go sit with you.
and you were nowhere to be found for five hours. Yeah, I feel bad about that. I'll hang out with you today, Andy, okay? I have your backpack. Just don't come now. I'll tell you when to come. No, no, I was going to say come now to be on the show. I'm not talking what about show? That. I'm on, what, what, Kerman and Friends? Yeah. Oh, you want to be on the show? We're, I mean, I'm on it now. Okay, all right. Do you have a question for Alex Isn't Stein? Isn't it better if I come live in person? Oh, you want to be on the show, like, in my apartment? <laughs> Please, want. Andy. Oh my God! I don't know if that's a good idea, but like, I guess. I mean, it's very like uh, disruptive. You know, um, Leaf King sent you the link to your text. Why don't you just click that? Oh, okay. All right, and then we'll talk later. All right, I love you. Love you back. Yeah. See, this is a hard. I love you, Andy. Uh, this is a hard relationship, Alex. I'm gonna be honest with you. It is not easy <laughs> dating. That he is very difficult to date. I mean, you lose him. He, he has so many fans. They come and they say, "Come with me," and then he's gone, and then I can't find him, and then he's somewhere else, and then uh, then we're at dinner, and I'm enjoying dinner. And I just want to chill sometimes. Like I don't always want to be on all the time. And people are sitting there and they're asking questions and they don't leave. Like they stay like the whole night. And then my night is kind of yeah. ruined because I just wanted to hang out with him or whoever I'm with. And I just don't want a bunch of weird people around. I, I, do you feel that way? Are you private at all? Oh, oh I'm super private. And, but this is the thing. And I'm really almost antisocial now. But see, Andy's you such are? a legend. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I like to do social stuff. But Andy is so he's done so much stuff in like the pop culture world. It's hard for people not to know who he is. You know what I mean? So I, know, I can kind of imagine. Away? Why can't they go away? Like it's I, for me, it's disrespectful when they, they stay the whole dinner. I hate yeah, that. but Andy's so nice. He doesn't I say know. scram. If he would say scram, they probably would. Yeah, yeah. He needs to say scram more. Let's take some questions from the fans and our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Weezy, you're on with uh, Alex Stein. I love this guy. I mean, he couldn't have been. He's the, my favorite guest of all time. Um, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hands down. Um, one of the things that I loved about uh, watching some of your stuff is the debates that you do. And they're so fun because you're obviously disagreeing with people, but you're able to do it in like a fun spirit to where you're even making the other person crack up, even if they're grumpy. How do you manage <laughs> to do that? I mean, do you win them over right away or is it uh, what? challenging? Well, Weezy, that, that's, a great, that's a great question. And I'm not just kissing your butt because when these debates, people like we were talking about earlier about identity politics, you're never going to actually make the person agree with you, especially if you're going into a debate with them because obviously they feel really passionate about the subject. So for me, I just try to disarm them and be funny and joking. Right. And that's why like people in my debates say like, oh, Alex, you're not you know hard enough on debates because I'm really not trying to convince the other person. I'm trying to give the people that are watching a fun show, try to entertain them and they can just hear my side of it and then they can make the decision. And so that's why it's funny you say that because I honestly am trying to be nice to the other person to make them laugh. And so I'm taking, you know, instead of like, you know, being combative, because I've had so many debates where you're just yelling at each other, it's better to just be joking and jovial and try to entertain the audience. I think that comes across a more effective in my mindset. Yeah, because you cannot change like someone's opinion, really. Because mm -hmm. people yeah. are pretty set yeah. in their opinions, typically. So I, I feel that way. So if you can include humor, if they can, you know, be... Uh, you know, lose the ego because people have egos about this, I feel. And uh, it's it's tough. I'll tell you, uh, my office and, and, yeah, is very oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, if your office is, but I'm saying yeah, people don't yeah. want to be self-deprecating, Elisa, and that's why yeah. I think you're great too. Is you're yeah. you're able to be self-deprecating. Is this Ham Hands? Wow, this is Robin's boyfriend, Ham Hands. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. I'm doing good. <laughs> yes, I'm at the beach. Ah, I'm over so here on Beach life. 97. <laughs> That's great. I hope you're having a great day, Ham Hands. Do you have a question for Alex Stein? Uh, yes. Uh, what, is, uh, what is the main thing that you like about your, your, your business, you know, the things that you do? What, what, say that again, Ham Hands. That's hard to understand you because uh, it's cutting out. What is the main thing that you like about doing your business, your, 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 the things you do? What's the... The main thing I do, I like to make people laugh. That's my favorite thing, like you did. Like, what is you, you liked how Robin's dad did that sexual stuff to her, right? What is that? You're famous for saying what, Ham Hands? What was the thing you said about Robin and her dad? Uh, yes, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, yes, okay. you know, my, uh, you know, my Robin song, when I told her, uh, take off your PJs, uh, dad is coming in with the Vaseline. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that was yeah, well, like see, one of the lines that see, people I, love. Yeah, you see, you like that because it makes people laugh. I'm the same way. I like to make people laugh. I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to take themselves too seriously. Just like you, Ham Hands. So we have similar motivations. 
And then over here, you can you you can see the beach. Look, you can see the the music and the DJ coming up. <laughs> he's having the best day, Ham Hands. He's having the yeah, best. He's day. having a good day. <laughs> he always does. Okay, let's bring up uh, Sharman Smith. You're on with Alex Stein. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Have you had any luck getting the left to you know soften up a little bit and laugh with you? Yeah, I mean, uh, but but then also there's these other people that like get so mad. Uh, like there's a lot of people that watch my video where I did uh, gas prices way too high. Vladimir Putin needs to die. And so like the left loved it that I was trolling Vladimir Putin. Right. So like, you know, some of them do come across and they're kind of like, oh, this is funny. I can laugh. But at the same time, people like on the far left are like, oh, my God, this guy's a right wing bigot. Stop sharing it because blue check marks like, you know, ABC, all these like, you know, uh, like left wing media have shared my stuff. And you'll see people fighting in the comments like this guy is a bigot and racist. They call me all the worst stuff. So, yeah, I have seen it affected like, you know, actually blue check mark time, you know, established uh, media, legacy media sharing my stuff. So that's been effective. But there's always going to be people on the far left that are just so insane. And, you know, so it's kind of hard. I'm never going to. I'm never going to give in to everybody on the left to like me. And there's people on the far right that don't like me. So, like I said, I just try to stay in the middle, be myself. And, uh, you know, I'm a populist. That's what I could consider myself. I'm a populist. So that's why I believe we should have free health care. I don't really like that. You know, people are afraid they break their arm. They don't want to call an ambulance. I hate that, especially like, you know, in the black community, they, those people really don't want to go to the hospital a lot of times when they're sick because they're worried about the hospital bills. I mean, that's all communities. I'm just saying I just feel bad for people that cannot afford to get health care, we should have some sort of universal basic health care for everybody. And the people on the right, oh, that's terrible. But the pharmaceutical companies make so much money anyway. So I don't know why we don't have caps. I don't know why we don't help sick people out. So that's why I'm, I'm in the middle. There's a lot of issues that aren't, I'm not, you know, staunchly conservative about. No, I think it's great. I like being self-deprecating and making fun of myself. I think it's the way mm -hmm. we get through to people. I think one of the things that got ruined about politics since Trump showed up is that you couldn't make fun of him without ticking off his yeah. people. We need to find a way to bring people together and get them to laugh. So I wanted to thank you for participating in that. Wow, Sharman, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Very lovely lady, Sharman. You, you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. So Sharman here uh, ran for president. Oh, Sharman, yeah. what the heck? So I need to follow you. Okay. You do Charmin. need to follow me. And I yeah, think what the you. world needs is a politician named after toilet paper to get us all laughing and joking again. And I volunteer as well. tribute. Yeah, but did you see during the pandemic all those people fist fighting over toilet paper? I mean, Sharman, yeah. you're they need you. We're gonna <laughs> no, need look, you. When I had to stop my campaign in 2019 because of a scandal from my campaign manager, I was heartbroken. But when the world started screaming for its Charmin during the pandemic, I knew there was still hope for me. And there you red go. or blue doesn't matter who. We want this mess cleaned up and we wanna come together. We wanna laugh, we wanna joke, we wanna yes. see each other's sides, and we have to do that. And the only way we're going to do it is through humor i agree Absolutely. i agree I totally agree with that yeah just try it like why can't we just connect with each other just try to help everybody and that's it like why make everything more complicated that's how i feel but um all right we have somebody else uh jimmy the christian you're on with uh alex stein hi alex stein how are you i'm doing well jimmy how are you doing? i like i love the fact that your influences are andy kaufman and benji bronk that's great <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i think everybody i'm just going to say what everybody's thinking you and elisa are like uh i mean come on now let's, let's i agree i think there's you a lot of good chemistry i'm, 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 gonna, I'm coming to la soon exactly. i gotta go out there all the time yeah Alex, yeah, yeah Alex, i'll be out there eh? Alex, andy and i are gonna be fist fighting Alex, last week she gave she put out a list of like her prospects there was like seven yeah, people on it it's like a list of who might be the the people who she might hook up with. I'm saying, based on this, you trump everybody on the list. You trump Andy. You trump Captain. Wow. You trump me. You trump everybody. Yeah. I'm just thinking. But anyway, I just have a question for you. It's a real simple question. Do you think the 2020 election had a lot of irregularities and was basically either stolen? Oh or no, dude, no! It was the best. Crazy. It was the best election ever in the history. Eighty-one million votes for Joe Biden. It was hundred percent correct. It's the most, the most safe and secure election they've ever had ever in the history of the world. Well, we and can only course, say so much about YouTube. And of course, come on, Jimmy. Very, of course, we're being very sarcastic right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Well, listen, you're a great yeah. guest. I love your energy. Uh, it's good to see you on the show and uh, keep up the good work. And, and, you know, when are you going to ask Elisa out on a date? That's really what I'm I am. Well, I'm going to okay. California. Okay. I am. We're gonna, I'm going to 100% take okay. her out. I got to get to California. All of, us, all, of us, be... folks, all of us list hopefuls need to just basically give up at this point because uh, obviously. Well, yeah. Elisa and I will make it. We'll make a dating vlog. We'll make a vlog. It'll go there triple go. viral. I mean, I take her out to dinner. We'll go on the beach. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We'll, we'll so we great need to. Uh, do you do like IRL streaming? No, not really. Oh, but okay, I would okay. just film some on the cell phone. No, no, no. Oh, but okay. I'm saying we just had a little clip did. of dinner, a little clip holding hands. No, at least I would take you out like that. When I come to LA, I'd love to take you out. I mean that. Wow. That'd be great. We'd have a good time. <laughs> yes, I think so. Um, okay, we have another caller, Kermit and friends. I'm really, really enjoying watching Alex. Uh, he gets me out of my regular Sunday state, and I'm really, really jazzed listening to him. And I was wondering if he does any motivational speaking. Great question, Peter. Thank you so much. That was Peter. Thank you, Peter. Great question. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I do a lot of speaking. I do some stand-up, but actually, I, I'm a public speaker. I actually kind of like to motivate people more. I mean, I like to make people laugh, but so I'm also an ambassador for Turning Point USA, and so I go in the fall, I'm going to be speaking at a lot of colleges, and I've spoken at some already, so yeah, I mean, I, I do consider myself a motivational speaker, 100%. I was captain of my high school football team, so I was kind of a motivator there in high school, and I, I always have been. I've never stopped. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Uh, let's see who, okay. Jimmy Rizzo, you really are begging me backstage. Yeah. Come on. You're finally on. What do you have to say? Yeah. Good evening now, Alex. Uh, nice to meet you there. I've never met you. Nice to meet you, life. Jimmy. <laughs> Americans have some sort of thing. What the English don't get. And I think you're one of those people. Now, um, Elisa. Yes. People have a voice and don't cut me off because I want to talk to Alex in a natural way. By the way there, Alex, you are the most annoying bastard who's ever been on Elisa's show. And honestly, <laughs> you're, you're probably right. You're probably I right. Think, you're not wrong. I think if somebody called you up and maybe real life on a real life sort of show, I think if those people had an opinion, you would be the first to cut them off. You've got that sort no. of vibe about you. What are you I talking about, think, Jimmy? I love yeah, it. I wouldn't cut yeah. you off. I mean, you're no, sitting there with your cigarette smoking like on you your weird computer. I wouldn't cut you so, off. I like you. I don't like you. You have the rig of a tortoise right? with your you, finger like that. You have the Eric the Actor hands. No, I love you. There now, isn't it, Alex? Now, now, listen. No, the I'm real me. I'm you know, your buddy, Jimmy. I just I'm like you with your cleft hand. Are you sure you like him? Right, right. Okay, Elisa has a question and a thing for you. Anybody will do anything to get a step up. And this stream has fucking proved it tonight that you will do anything. You've sounded excited. Oh, I love this guy. He's lovely. I'll do anything. Blah, blah, blah. You know, this stream comes across as that. I want you to watch the fucking stream back and you tell me it doesn't come over like that. And by the way there, Alex, you're the worst fucking nightmare. And a, a person that give me a headache... I've ever met in my fucking lifetime. Do you know that? And do you know what? I want my own shirt in America, and I want to earn you like a fucking bitch. Well, you're a very nice guy, Jimmy. I'm so, yeah, I really yeah, appreciate I'm that. Like, what yeah, the hell's wrong really with like that guy? <laughs> I don't know. He seems like a very lovely man. What a well, weirdo. Okay. Nice All right. Let's bring yeah. up this nice conservative Republican. His name is Trumpster Bob. He loves Trump. He's very conservative. He lives in Texas. Bob, you're on with Alex Stein. Well, ain't that a miracle in and of itself? How are you doing today, Elisa? Great. How are you? Well, this Alex guy, I got news for everybody. He's a dug in left winger. He ain't nothing right wing about this guy from the day he was born. All right. Let's Why talk you about your relationship with Gavin McGinnis. Do you even know where he was from? Because it didn't come out until six years after I told everybody where he was from. What are you talking about? I don't know who he said. Where's he from? He's not from Canada. <laughs> who? McGinnis who? You said Gavin McGinnis was your best buddy. Oh, Gavin McInnes. It's hard to understand you, T-Bob. You got Gavin, too much beard in your mouth. Gavin, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gavin McInnes. Yeah, he's from Canada. What about him? Well, he's not from Canada. He's from England. He's from where? He's from England. His dad worked for a left-wing consortium. He, he moved back and forth from Canada to England almost every year, every three years. And then he went and okay. got his citizenship in Canada. He's not even so from what? Canada. So what? So... So who cares where he's from? Left wingers. His whole family's left wingers. How's he going to be a right winger? 
Dude, it doesn't matter if you're left wing or right wing. I like both sides. I'm not weird like you. I don't follow some sort of identity weird. politics. I can I like people both sides of the aisle. You uh, wrote a book called Vice Guys to Anal Sex. Do you own one? Because Carl Tucker Carlson had one autographed by. Yeah, well, Tucker Carlson's a great guy. I like Tucker Carlson. Listen, T-Bob, you don't have to like me. That's fine. I like you. I think you seem like a nice guy. You're hard to understand, but you seem like a nice guy. You're a fake. You're a left winger. Look, David McGinnis did did Vice Guys. That's fine. You can come. That's what made you, you can famous. call me a left you winger. I, I I don't you I don't care. I don't. Chad Warner owned it. He's very upset for some reason. He was in the hospital recently, and uh, he just winds himself up. So let's just like let him relax. I wish you'd keep him on. No, I love it. I like yeah, the combativeness. Yeah, yeah. T Bob, T Bob, I don't. I, I know I, I don't care if you call me you left winger. I like you like you say. I don't try to ascribe. You I, you're left wing. There's nothing about you whatsoever that spells that you're right wing. So I got to. I never you, said that I am that wing? right wing. I'm not that right wing. I never said that I was. When, when did I, I say that I'm some right wing guy? Right wing. I just want to clarify that for everybody. Anybody thought he was right okay. wing? You lost your mind. Okay. Okay, right. I agree. That's fine. All he right. says that he's like different, he feels different ways. You know, he's not like a sheep that just goes all to one side. I don't even like sheep like that. So, you know, he's an open yeah. mind for things. That's that's good. Okay, let's bring on a nicer person, K Jobs. K Jobs, you're on with Alex. Hi. Hey, Kay. Hi. <laughs> What's up, Kay? Are you I'm nervous, just... Kay? Yeah. Well, that's better than what T Bob was saying. So how can yeah, we help I love, you? I love Bob so much. He's my he's my he's my best friend, my best Kermit friend's uh, friend. Hey, hey, can you think of good a company? Question? Yeah, can, can you think of a question uh, for Alex? Uh, you know about his career. He's achieved so many great things. You know, he's on TV. He's getting his own show. Anything come to mind? <laughs> what do you think about silver spoons? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what silver spoons? What is silver spoons? Oh, uh, it's a, oh god, it's a story. It's a story that uh, I had to tell in another interview. I, I really am terrible with questions. I, I, I had to think about it. I'll probably think about it like 20, ten million later. But I, I really don't know what to ask. I love silver spoons. That's my answer. I love it. I love it. I like uh -huh. silver forks. I like silver knives. I love all cutlery. Yeah, Silver's doing very well right now. Um, okay, we have one more guy. I don't even – actually, two more guys. Uh, this guy, MGA – yes? Hey, what's up, Alex? It's uh, Michael Gavin Ali. Um, I was just wondering, uh, you were talking about the Howard Stern Show. Uh, what's your take on Stuttering John? I mean, uh, he's terrible now. I mean, okay, I mean, no. but he's, yeah, but he's funny. But now, but now he's the funniest he's ever been. Unironically, you know, because he's such a bad alcoholic. Yeah, I, I mean, like I have been watching uh, who are these podcasts, and I've just been cracking up with the segments. And I was watching with Elise and some other guy, and John was arguing, and I was just cracking up hysterically. And yeah. it's just amazing how much entertainment he brings. <laughs> no, you know what you need to do? Go back and listen to it. It's like, it's like you can find it if you search Stuttering John, but he was on Artie's podcast like about like four or five years ago. And, and he was like kind of him and Artie were kind of getting into it. But even then, Stuttering John sounded a little more put together. But now I think because he's been drinking so much, like he's just off the rails. You know what I mean? Like he's lost. <laughs> Well, so I think what I'm guessing that it is, is he's so insanely jealous of like everybody that's working at the Howard Stern show. He just can't break away from that. And that is not a good way to be. Do you think it, I could be right about that? Or you think it's something else? You think it's just alcohol? Duh. Yeah, Come on. Duh, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, because he's mad, too, because he worked at the Jay Leno show, one of the biggest shows ever, and he still doesn't yeah. have a job in media. Like, if he would have made friends with one person there, no, they should be able to friends. help him. With, that's what he, I'm saying. He burns every single bridge possible. He burns every bridge. And you don't think does. every every other employee there is working on some sort of TV show now? I mean, you know, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. So Yeah, I don't know why he does that, but I could sense his jealousy was just so big. You know, when he talks to me about Benji, because you know, he's tried to date me, he tried to ask me on a hike and you know, a bunch of things. But I didn't want to hang out with him because he was so negative about everything. And he would always bring up Howard Stern. Like, I don't really bring up Howard Stern that much unless, like, someone else brings it up usually. But he yeah. brings up too much. Like, he's just constantly talking talking about him but it's not in a good way it's in a negative way so i think a good lesson for him and just for people in general is try to let go of things 
that are like weighing you down, making you upset. Like he makes him his own self upset, his own self. And nothing is really going on. He, he's still upset with Howard Stern after all this time. And it's just ridiculous. And I think you should forgive him. Do you have anybody like that in your life that you haven't forgiven? No, I mean, kind of, not really. I'm just saying like some of my old friends, I guess. But I almost, the people that I haven't forgiven, I almost kind of used as fuel because all the haters have said, oh, Alex Stein's never going to become anything. A lot of those are my close friends. So now I'm kind of like, nah, 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 boo, boo, because now I'm grinding <laughs> and trying. So I kind of need to have a little an animosity towards people, almost as like a motivation. But for Stuttering John, he was a guy that, you know, had this awesome opportunity to go on The Tonight Show, was very underqualified for the job. Right. And totally screwed that up. So so Andy's mad. He's probably mad at himself. And that's why you see him just constantly drinking the alcohol. I almost feel sorry for him. If he ever wanted to redeem himself, if he got sober, then he might have a chance. But the way he drinks on one stream, he has like 20 beers. And I'm yeah. not saying don't drink. I mean, I don't. But I'm, I'm just saying you're never going to get your life back in order if you're constantly drunk. And I think that's like the cycle that he's in. He's just stuck in that negative feedback loop where he, he wakes up hungover, depressed, anxiety's high because all the serotonin you've just killed with the alcohol. And so that's why it's just that's why it's like he's just declining so much. It's really kind of sad to watch. But he's yeah, the funniest he's ever been. <laughs> it is very funny. I mean, he like hates so many people. He's blocked everybody from my Discord server pretty much. He's blocked me. I know I, he's mad at Chrissy Mayer too. Um, just yeah, because she called him a dabbler, and that's yeah. the thing. It's like he can't sell any tickets to any of his shows. I mean, it's hard to sell tickets. Like and now, I'm selling some tickets, but it's just because I'm kind of viral right now. You know, I'm sure there's gonna be a time where nobody knows who I am. But let's just be honest. When it comes to him, he screwed up so many opportunities. It's hard. He had the keys to the castle, and like he had. I remember you can go back and listen to these clips where Artie was talking about how he went and visited uh, Stuttering Johnny. He had this beautiful house overlooking L.A., and now he has none of that. Now he's in the one bedroom apartment chugging beers all day long i don't think he gets super i think he has like supervised visits with his kids he can't yeah. even see his own children it's just really downhill it's just really sad to see all that yeah it's sad hopefully it improves his life i mean i can't imagine that but uh here's a person he's muted just unmute yourself uh alex link so you could ask uh alex stein a question okay but he's muted okay there you are hey hey oh uh. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit lost here. So, I, uh, you're, so you're on with Alex Stein. Do you know who that is? Unfortunately, no. I'm not. Um, I have ADHD, so I try uh, huh. my best to stay away from uh, from my media for the most part. Okay, well, you've been here. I saw you backstage the whole show. Yep. Did you hear anything that was going on? Do you have like any insight or a question or you know anything on your mind? Um, honestly, you guys brought up um, the divisions in America. Uh, yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, Yuri Bismenov? Oh, yeah. yeah, the guy that said, yeah, yeah, that's, he's selling us out, you know, basically how Marxism and communism is going to take over. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, so if you look up uh, his warning to America, if you will um, – in that talk show, it's a viral clip, him saying that, yeah. And everything came true that he said in that clip. Yeah, uh, unfortunately so. Um, yeah, we're really, really divided. Um, and uh, there are theories uh, that basically uh, show that, uh, you know, we're trying to be divided in America. Well, that somebody sort of behind the scenes is trying to do that. I don't want to sound um, conspiracy theorist here. But you can. You, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, if you consider things like, uh, you know, uh, pro-choice or pro-life or uh, Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, and everything else, um, you know, the more divided we are, and in more directions that we all pull, um, the weaker we get as a country, unfortunately. Yeah, but that's what they do. That's their plan. They want us to keep fighting each other so we don't go after the politicians and the people that are making it worse. I mean, that's it's the game plan, you know, divide and conquer, and that's what's happening. No, 100%. Oh, man. Um, are you okay, Alex? Link? Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, it's, uh, sorry, guys. It's been what's a long wrong? What's, what's wrong? What happened today? I know. Relax. <laughs> the world is screwed up, but, dude, we're going to be dead and gone by the time all the cultural yeah. Marxism really comes in play. So you'll be okay. we got to keep on enjoying each other's company instead of fighting like they want us to fight, you know? Yeah, that's true.
Like T-Bob, like that guy, he wants to fight. He wants to fight the left. I want to embrace each other so we can try. Look, there he is. He All he wants to do is fight with everybody. I don't want to fight with anybody. I want to try to love one another. Uh, you can take your love and go shove it up his ass. Uh, See? No, you can keep him on. See, that's what I'm saying. How do, you, how do we get anywhere with T-Bob? How do we get anywhere with that attitude? Well, we get somewhere really far. We, we know who to vote for, most important. When you learn who's who and – but, D- but T Bob, let me just say this. Dan let me say this real quick. Dan Crenshaw. He's one of your butt buddies, right? Well, Dan Crenshaw ain't. I called him out. T Bob, T Bob, have you not seen my video of me calling Dan Crenshaw out? Have you not seen my video of me calling him out? Oh, I haven't seen that one. But I'll be with well, you on that well, one. Hey, T Bob, T Bob, go Google Alex Stein, Dan Crenshaw. I called him out for being a rhino. I called him out for being a globalist. See, the difference between you and me is I actually go do something. You just you sit behind a computer with Kraft Macaroni. I've actually done I actually a lot go more do than you stuff. probably ever have. Without You've never done. You haven't done as much as me, T Bob. T Bob, well then go watch my video of me calling out Dan Crenshaw if you think you've done so much. Have you ever called out Dan Crenshaw to his face? Globalist, how many globalists have you exposed? Do you know? Do you know who the? I exposed him to his face, T Bob. I exposed him to his face. Google Alex Stein. He's not a globalist. What are you talking about? You just called him a globalist, and now he's not a globalist? No, I never called him a globalist. He don't have enough money to be a globalist. He may think that way, but he's not a globalist like George Soros. Who even got George Soros and uh, Mr. Humpty Dumpty, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, fighting? Do you even know who did that? I did that, moron, since you did so damn much. Do you even know how I did it? See, Bob, you haven't done anything, bud. Well, Nobody knows who you are. I've done way more than you, and I'll prove it right now. Let's start How? comparing. What's, what's the biggest thing you ever did besides what I did, getting uh, George Soros and Mark Zuckerberg fighting? And You, you don't, don't even know, know either. either. They don't even know who you are, bud. T-Bob, you're delusional if you think Mark Zuckerberg and George Soros are worried about you, dude. If you oh, well, honestly think that you're, you're involved with them. Days of me tipping off George Soros about Mark Zuckerberg undermining Facebook and causing him over hundreds of millions of dollars. You're one of these weird QAnon freaks. You're one of these weird QAnon guys, and that's that's your problem. After that meeting, two things took place. Number one, I was banned, and then they trusted Bob banned from Facebook for at least three years. I've been let back on, but not Facebook. Now, let me ask you this. What's the other thing that took place? Facebook stopped doing all that facial feature stuff, recognition and everything over there at Facebook. It eased up everything. They still do facial recognition stuff. What are you talking about? Facebook admits. I I, when it used to be, it got so bad when Facebook. I started up a new account. T-Bob, T-Bob, this shows face, you, this shows you how smart you are. I got T- uh, blocked. See, T-Bob, you won't have a conversation. That's your problem. But I'm telling you, already Facebook admits that they look at our eyes and they see our, our the way our pupils dilate when we like something, and they study that. In their terms of service, we agree to let them turn on the camera and look at us anytime they want. So I don't know how smart you are, but they still get to look at us, but they still do facial recognition, yeah, so wake up. They the degree that they were doing it for before. They're not using it for the oh same Oh, my God. Thing. T-Bob, T-Bob, you're delusional, bud. That's your problem. You're delusional. delusional. You're one of those Facebook. On. Yeah. You're one of these QAnon. Yeah, you're, you're probably an alcoholic. Do you drink? T Bob, what do you like to drink? You get it right what do you in your drink, mouth T-Bob? That you don't know nothing. Let me ask you this since you know so damn much. T Bob, what do you drink? Bro, What's your favorite drink? In the Americas in the 50s and 60s. I, I can't understand what you're saying, T Bob, because you don't you don't speak proper English. What what do you get? Uh, the mafia in the Americas. You're talking about La Casa Nostra, the mafia, probably the Kennedy family was big in, yeah. into the the what, so you're telling me the Kennedys weren't bootleggers in the mafia? Is that what you're saying, T-Bob? You're well, saying that's not were. true? They didn't run the mafia. They were peons. Okay, T-Bob, you're not based in reality. You're one of these QAnon oh, losers. That's reality. who you are. I'm very well studied, unlike you. T-Bob, you can't even formulate a proper paragraph or sentence. So, I mean, I can't understand you. You don't that's even speak proper I English. I'll talk you if you want to start talking, mouthy boy. Is that annoying for you, um, Alex, when somebody just no, I think love they know it. everything? You love No, I people? like it. Yeah, I you love like it. it. Yeah, I love it. Well, because I feel sorry for them. I'm very empathetic to these guys. They have so much paranoia. That's why they can only spread hate. It's like when I talk about the low vibrational and high vibrational, you're high vibrational, so you attract that. He's low vibrational, so when he sees you and I having this high vibrational conversation, it scares him. He's like, why are yeah. these people happy? Why are they enjoying life? Because he's paranoid about, you know, Joe Biden coming to kill him or Facebook's looking at his, you know, stuff. He, right. He's not able That's to get true. out of that. 
He's That's very what I'm saying. paranoid. He's not a- and you wouldn't believe what happened, uh, Alex. He was so paranoid and he was like freaking out all the time. And he ended up in the hospital. He almost died, Bob. Right, Bob? Remember look, that? Look, you need to quit taking me down and off. You either leave me on or up, man. That's dumb. Well, you're paranoid. She's worried about your health. We don't want you to get myocarditis. But he claims he knows so damn much. He knows everything. He don't know nothing. I don't say I know everything. When did I ever say I know everything? When did I ever say I know everything? Who is it that hired Alex Jones to be the actor? See, of course, you're such a paranoid freak. You don't even like Alex Jones. You can't. It's fact, moron. Not paranoia. I don't do. I don't. You're paranoid. You're paranoid. You're paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Oh, who hired God. Alex Jones? What What are you talking about? Who hired Alex Jones? Just to make so what are you going to say, George Soros? What are you going to say? Well, I don't know what your wrong Free answer is. LLC. Who owns Free Speech Systems LLC? Listen, T. Bob, I, I don't even want to deal with you, dude, that because you're not you based hired, in reality. You hired an idiot. He, Bob, please just stop. Bob, stop. Oh my God. All right, Andy. I'm with my hero, Andy Dick, the man, the myth, the legend. I love it, Andy. Love you, the king. Love you. No, your NTV show is my favorite show in the world. That was the best with you, those kids, and eating the ice cream. I still watch it all the time. That was the best. You're the man. Mine, too. I love it, too. I mean, who, who wouldn't love a show with their name in the title? <laughs> Well, but it was so good. It was so good. You're a, you're a, a, a comedic legend, I, and I like your IRL stuff. You're the yeah, best. I just you gotta it. take better care, Andy. I'm so worried about you. You're a legend. You can't go out like all those other guys, like Farley and all those other guys. No, no we don't I want know. him dying. We don't want him I, dying. Yeah, I take my. I'm I'm right here with at, at least as a place. Well, and, and I want to say, Andy, I remember Elisa got mad, but I've watched all your content with Chicken Andy. I thought you seemed like a fatherly figure, a great guy. Oh, there's Captain Content. I see him. But I just want to say, I think that you really have, have shined a new light, Andy. You showed that you're very vulnerable and you're very awesome, a sweet guy. I think, uh, you know, you're misunderstood. I really like you a lot, Andy. No, no, I'm hanging out. I'm part of the, I'm part of the show, too. Join um. Can I just come say yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Can you guys think of a question? Uh, can Andy or Captain think of a question for Alex Stein? Oh yeah, what do you do? I she told me, but I can't remember. I'm a I'm a political troll. I'm like a political activist. I go to all the city council meetings and I call out all the mayors and I get in politicians' face. And I have a show on the Blaze TV. Yeah, I'm a nut job, Andy. I'm like you. I'm like I'm like her ex boyfriend, Benji Brock. Uh, Benji Bronk. <laughs> I go and I, I I yell and scream at protests and and, and press conferences. <laughs> I'm insane for the Ukraine. That sounds dangerous. Like you could be killed. I it can be killed. I can. You know, they call me all, all sorts of names. But, Andy, okay, you're a hero of mine, but you're going to be mad because I'm trying to steal your girl. Uh, I mean, me and Elisa. Uh, hey, hey, <laughs> is. I'm fine with it. So is this guy. We're going to be a thruple. <laughs> I know, but oh, Captain Conte, he he's four. not going to. No, no, no. It's going to be four of us. Captain, you, and her, and me. That's way one, two. Uh, I'll work. I, It'll, that works I, for me. Quadruple. Who's the fifth? Everybody. There's another fifth. <laughs> we'll find one. We'll find one. I don't feel wanted anymore. We can be an I'm the fifth. <laughs> Wait, is Gucci's with you guys? Show Gucci's. Is Gucci's with you guys? Wait, you're a fan of Gucci's? Don't tell me that. You, I, no, I but I watch it. all their stuff. You Come on, do? what are you talking about? At least I see they're they're famous. They're IRL streamers, and wow. and Andy's brought them back. Well, I mean, now I I didn't really watch her stuff till Andy was in the van. I mean, in really? the in the RV. Yeah, I yeah. Love so now that. I watch that. Um, Gonzo, are you there? Shoot. Okay, Gonzo was calling me. Another person that's great. Gonzo, call back. Well, Gonzo needs to come on because because I like Gonzo, but I need to cuss Gonzo out. Gonzo's coming I into town. Gonzo. Alex, if you could orchestrate coming into town, like in the beginning of August, yeah. Gonzo, it'll be Gonzo, you, and these guys all together. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> I got to meet Andy. I got to get some content yeah. with Andy, the man. Yeah. Wow, you really want to set up a train, don't you? <laughs> No, yeah, Andy. I'm gonna send the train. We're gonna go doggy <laughs> style on Elisa. Yeah, yes. all these handsome guys, and then there's me. I'm the caboose. Right? I'm Alex, I gotta be honest with you. I, I love having a podcast. 
I love having a podcast. It's the best. It's it's the best, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, duh. We're having fun. We're creating content. And that's the other thing is people like this. Like, oh, I, I'm yeah. not trying to keep talking about T-Bob, but people like, you know, the high vibrational energy from the screen. They can tell it digitally. I keep talking about that, but that's a big thing. That's why you're successful. And I think that's why, you know, and just think about this. With the way the legacy media is going now, in five years, a lot of it will be dead. And this is what people will be watching is people like you and me. Like, yes. right? you know, if you're really thinking like five years ahead, this is going to be the the you know number one form of media, I believe. I believe that too. We have a caller, a very passionate caller, Kermit and friends. How can I help you? Hey, hey, hey now, hey now. Hey now. I want to ask, is Alex Stein a independent? What party does he align himself with? I think he answered that already. Okay, thank you, Gio. Was that... Um, I'm a populist. I consider myself a populist for sure, yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to get a hold of you. Yes, Kermit and friends, how can I help you? Hey, hey, sis, it's your bro. Okay, hey, Kenneth, do you have a question for Alex Stein? Do what? Do you have a question for Alex Stein? Oh, I'm sorry, I just, uh... I haven't had a chance to really watch the show. I'm still. You're not watching the show, Kenneth. Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing, doing, Kenneth? You know what time it is. Oh my gosh! All right, Kenneth, I got to tell Gonzo to call back though. I want to talk to Gonzo because Gonzo and Eric, the actor, I got to talk to Gonzo. He used to troll Eric, and I I miss Eric every day. I listen to those clips almost every every night before I go to bed. I probably listen to an old Eric, the actor clip. If I'm not listening to like something political or serious, when I want to just like turn, you know, turn my brain off, I listen to old Eric, the actor and him getting on like in plain sight or any of those shows. Those are the funniest. I love you, Miss Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, she's so sweet. That's like one of my best friends. Uh, You're in luck. Gonzo is on the line. Yes, Gonzo. Hey, what's up? Sorry, I was calling with a question for uh, Andy, but um, okay, it's fine. The the time is fast. It's all right. Andy's here. What's up? What's up, Alex? Prime time. I'm here. She just when she she just shoves me backstage. Because I'm trying to listen to my caller named Gonzo, who's visiting us at the beginning of August. I'm super excited. Oh. We're gonna hang out with him. He's what he's my favorite caller. He's my favorite caller of all time on the Howard Stern show. He's on the air right now. Gonzo, what's your question? Well, I have a question for Gonzo. Gonzo, Wait, can you on. hear me? Wait, uh, Alex, just one second. I'm just curious this question okay. for you. What's what's your question, Gonzo? Oh no, I didn't really. I had a question for Andy. But, Andy, uh, okay. The time has passed. It's it's fine. It's, it's what's what's but, your uh, question, uh, Gonzo? Andy's on. What's He's on. Question. I'm right here. What's your question? Oh, Andy's question. Oh, I was going to ask Andy if he's worried about um, Alex Stein coming to uh, L.A. and stealing his girl. You know what? If she finds Good somebody, question. if she finds somebody else that she likes better, have at it. <laughs> Andy, wow, that very is, nice. No, that Andy's not, not threatened. Nice. He's I'd really be, not. I'd be upset, but what, what can I do? I don't want to force. What am I gonna? What am I, Muslim forcing? <laughs> <laughs> forcing her into the Sharia marriage. love. Sharia love. You gotta. You have to wear a yeah. hijab. I. You know, honestly, if she, if she, I don't think she will find anyone that loves her more than me. But everybody loves her. Aww. I agree. Well, we'll all go to dinner. We'll have a competition. It'll be my treat. You can, you, we can, uh, uh, drinks on me, Andy, and then we'll see at the end. She'll have to pick one of us, like reality TV show style, though. <laughs> we have to film it. Yeah, you're not going to like that, though. This dinner sounds very exhausting. But, it is, uh, especially with Andy. You know it's going to be exhausting. <laughs> but, but, but people are mad at Gonzo. I'm just saying I wish Gonzo was on the phone longer. Cause, Why? Uh, what do you, you want to say to Gonzo? What is your Well, question? I just because he used to troll Eric the actor so much. And I just always wonder if he ever feels guilty. Because, you know, Eric the actor, you know, he died. And he, Gonzo yeah. was like one of the last people that would troll Eric before he died. I'm sure Gonzo misses him. I know he Wait, does. But did, I just... that guy, did that guy kill himself? Well, Eric, the actor died of like a heart disease. He was the guy that was the the midget, you know, that was like in the oh, wheelchair. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Howard got him some acting roles. And, and Andy, you had the most classic. They did the Andy Dick roast on Howard. And I love how he, you know, he doesn't admit how he used you for so much content and then threw you under the bus too. You know, he yeah. really used you for a lot of stuff and then kind of screwed you over. And he did that with a lot of guests, sadly. Mm, he did. I don't look at it like that. I Because, you know, I because I don't care. Yeah. I really yeah, but they did the Andy yeah. Dick roast. That was like, the, that was yeah, a Benji big episode. Actually, Benji actually roasted um, Andy, which is really weird for me to watch. Um, Gonzo, um, Alex had a good question for you. Did you hear his question? 
No, I didn't. Can you? Uh, yeah. So he's a really big fan of um, Eric, the actor. And what his question was, okay. was, did you feel any sort of guilt, uh, you know, when Eric died? Did you feel responsible for that in any way? Um, I didn't feel responsible, but I felt very bad. Like, uh, and were you I, sad? To, uh, to making up. To, oh, of course. I'm a huge Eric the Actors fan. Yeah. Um, he's my favorite yeah. of all time. Yeah. I was, yeah. Everybody was terribly sad. Of course. Okay. So Gonzo well, doesn't feel. I'm, I'm not a fucking monster. He's not a monster. Gonzo yeah. is a nice guy. I dated well, that Gonzo. Was... Yeah. Awesome. So. Like no, I'm just saying Eric the actor was the best, and Baganza used to always say he was dead, and then Eric would have to put like these signs, or he'd like be holding a sign with the date on it, like I'm alive. Gonzo used to I mean he like he kind of forecasted his death, sadly. Yeah, yeah. So do you miss yeah. Eric the actor, Gonzo? Do you like think about him a oh, lot? Of course. A lot of a lot of people don't know this. Alex might not know this, but Eric and I were actually friends for a while. Like we were uh you know, we weren't we weren't always like enemies. You weren't enemies. We were pretty, pretty yeah, at first y'all were friends, we right? And then friends after we would uh, go on together, so it wasn't like a, you know, I didn't I didn't hate him at all. Okay. I'm sure he hated me. I know no, that he, he loved him. Yeah, no, he yeah. loved him. Gonzo loved him. Okay, guys. Okay, wait, ask ask Gonzo what. Ask well, Gonzo Yon doesn't like him either. Why didn't it, Why didn't Gonzo ever be friends why, with Yon? Why, why, why aren't you friends with Yon? But why would Why would Gonzo want to be friends with Yon? He's just like oh, some I'm, random I'm person. With Jan. What? Jan, uh, that's, Jan reached out to me a couple years ago. He was like trying to get teeth or something. Okay. He had like some, he had like some promotion, or what do you call that, campaign to get teeth. And teeth? He reached out to me and asked me to like share his, his campaign to win teeth. There, there was like some, some dental work, work. yeah. Um, and you were helpful in that, Gonzo? Dentist. Um, oh, I, I, I retweeted it out and he was like surprised that I would do that. But I told him like, I think, I don't know, I don't, I don't think he got, I think Jan might have been a whack backer himself. He didn't really get the joke either. Okay, all right. I, well, Gonzo, you're a good guy. Thanks for calling back, Gonzo. Love you. Love you, Gonzo. Gonzo's the best. He's really the funniest caller of all time. I just love him. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> all right. It's a great show. Tell <laughs> Andy's the man. I'm gonna and I'm gonna I need to get your number or message me or somehow get, get in contact with me because I'm Who's gonna number? I wanna what well, your number so I can call uh, you when I get to LA. Okay, great. So so when are you coming here? Well, I mean, I travel a lot. I was just there not that long ago, uh, okay. but I'll probably, I mean, I'll, I'll probably be back in August for sure. I've got to go to Mexico in August, but maybe after Mexico, I'll, I'll come to Los Angeles. Alisa, we're going to we're gonna go yeah. out. You're going to fall in love with me, yeah. and then I'm going to break your heart, and then you're going to have to be sad, and then you're going to, everybody's going to bash me on the show. Wait, you're going to break my heart? A little that, bit. Did I hear that correctly? A little bit. I'm just, I'm just trolling. That's very, I'm just yeah, trolling. That's very confident. That's very that's confident. But you I might break like, mine. You might break mine. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just kind of kidding. Yeah. But, uh, but I do want to hang out. I do would like to meet you and, and take you out to dinner, my treats, if you want to go. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Hey, uh, right. Captain. What's going on? Hey. Hi. Hi. You guys <laughs> Hi. really hitting it off there, huh? Yeah. yeah. Good. No. Yeah. Great. Love. You. Love is in the air. You guys can tell. Everybody can feel the energy. <laughs> any man, any man would be lucky to enjoy a nice dinner with her. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I know you guys had one, but see, I mean, you know, and and you know, primetime ninety nine does it a little different though. I got a little more pizzazz, a little more dazzle, razzle dazzle when I take the ladies out. You know what oh. I mean? It's gonna be wild. Yeah, a lot of razzle dazzle. We're gonna have you're gonna get they're gonna get dessert with a with a candle and it lit with a sparkler. We're gonna be oh. it's gonna be wild. Yes, 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 yes. Huh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, uh, it sounds like a very uh, very beautiful uh, very beautiful date together. You guys, you guys. Okay, wait, wait, Captain. Where are you guys? Where are y'all parked right now? Are you guys? Uh, what beach are y'all on? Uh, we're actually we're a couple blocks from here, Lisa. Can we take a shower, please? <laughs> I guess. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can All take right. a shower. All right, it's gonna be me and the two boys. Oh yeah. Wait, who's the other boy? It's, no, wait, who? I don't know. It's just I, you two, we, right? Uh, we, but I, Andy, do you do you miss chicken? Do you miss chicken? Yeah, of course I do. I know y'all. Y'all. Y'all had a great relationship. I know uh, Elisa hates that, but that y'all really. I that was like some it. great content. I know, but y'all were close in the car, and y'all were hanging out when you got your glasses. Some of that oh, was some great content. Watching. When you went to that, when you got to went to that wax place, and you had some drinks, and you were eating the food at that, you know, at that wax place, and you got <laughs> wax there. That was some of the greatest content ever. You're look. I mean, it was just good old. Those are the good old days. You don't even know they're the good old days till they're over. You know. It was only last month. 
Mm. Yeah, it's but I'm saying I miss it. I miss it. Good old month. Yeah. You never know until it's over. Yeah, but you and Captain don't have that vibe. Captain just sits there. Y'all don't even, it's not even close to what y'all had. You and Chicken were, it was emotional. The roller coaster. When you went shopping, you got all those good clothes. That was some of the greatest IRL content ever. It was. The Andy Dick Chicken uh, collaboration was very, very memorable indeed. But why does Chicken, why did Chicken have to go away? I thought, I thought he's always IRL, Captain. Why does he stop? Does he have well, to go back to work? Chicken, I don't know. I guess. Think- he had to go back to work. He had to make money because he wants to take care of his boy. He's lying. I'm just kidding, baby. <laughs> You're not allowed to go back there, Andy. Oh, my baby. <laughs> I'm right here in front of your house parked in a fucking shitty RV. So, come on. All right. All right. If people want to watch <laughs> you, how do they find you? I'm on Twitter, Alex999, Instagram, Primetime Stein. I got two channels on uh, YouTube, Alex Stein, and then I got a channel called The Conspiracy Castle where I do long form interviews. And uh, I just want to say thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. I've watched you so for so long. And like I said, very beautiful, smart, articulate. You're somebody that I really hope I can become friends with uh, for a long time. Even if we don't have a romantic relationship, I hope we can at least have a friendship. Uh, because I, I really do look up to you, and I like how you're grinding on the internet like me. People don't give you probably enough respect for how hard it is to do a show like this. You know, it might seem easy, but it's a lot of work. So I appreciate you and everything you do, Lisa. Thank you so much, Alex. I'm so glad we're, we talked and that you were on Kermit and Friends. Everybody follow Alex. He's incredible and really killing it right now. Yay. Oh, my God. I love I love that you're on. I love that you met Andy, and we're all going to be hanging out soon. <laughs> And directly, we will. No, <laughs> probably not. I don't know. What? <laughs> anyway, um, so after this show, there's going to be a wrap up show, Alex, and they're going to talk about everything that went on here today. What do you think they should talk about? Well, they got to talk about the romantic chemistry between us. They have to talk about T Bob and the fighting. And then uh, I think that's it. I think those are the two main things. <laughs> I there's think a we- lot of other stuff, <laughs> but th- those need to be like the, the two top on the rundown. Okay, okay, that's perfect. You're smart. He's been in TV before. He knows what's up. Okay, so Wheezy, wrap-up show. How great was our guest, Alex Stein? Amazing. How I mean, great was he? Totally love him. I think he's the best <laughs> guest of all time. And he's right. We have to talk about your guys' chemistry. Um, yeah. Captain being insanely in- jealous to where he was extremely <laughs> awkward. I love that. And, yeah, just about everything in general. I want to play a couple of clips that people might not have seen of him, like, debating and stuff like that because they're just so great. And, yeah, I think that he will take up most of the wrap-up show, to be honest. Okay, great. I actually have, like, clips of him. They were from Fox News. I wasn't sure if I could play them or not. What do you think? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Leaf would know, but I don't know. All right. Um, Well, anyway, we'll figure it out. I'll promote it, like, on Twitter and on, uh, you know, the Discord server. Why should people be on our Discord server? What do you think the benefit is? Well, I mean, this is – one or two hours on a Sunday filled with content. If you're in our Discord, it's every minute. If you miss 15 minutes of our Discord, you are already behind. I mean, there is so much going on. It's such a fast pace that um, you miss yes. 90% of the Kermosphere if you're not in our Discord. And something that you guys didn't even know happened today was my colleague was supposed to come on the show to talk to Charmin. Right. And he got mad at me. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty Uh-oh. sure. And then also high pitch Eric. So I'd like him to be on the wrap up show. Absolutely. Uh, I'm posting the link to the wrap up show so people can watch it. If you want to be on the wrap up show, you could just get the stream yard link from our discord server. So you can appear, you can talk about everything that happened today. You can yes. talk about Wheezy. You can talk about me. Talk shit about us. We don't care. Do it. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Troll Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Great interview, hard. Elisa. That was hey. fantastic. I you know, he's it. easy to talk to. That guy's oh. easy to talk to. I've, I've been great. friends with him on he's Facebook great. for years. You know, I've been friends with him on Facebook for years. And like, you know, he blew up. Definitely. Mm-hmm. This guy blew up. There's no yeah. doubt about it. He's huge now. He's on every, uh, talk show and he's getting his own show so it's amazing you know what can happen when you build something right and And yeah yeah, like your guys's chemistry together it was perfect i mean he should come on every once in a while it would be great to have a segment every month or something like that with him because he's just so down to earth and it was it was wonderful i mean i loved every second of it 
Yeah. Eric, high pitch Eric is texting me right now. He wants me to talk about this Lala situation, but I don't mm. feel like comfortable talking about it really okay. because uh, he needs to call in to talk about it. I don't, I don't want to bring it up just because like, I don't want to get in between what's going on with them, right, but right. you're producing the Lala and uh, high pitch Eric show. And yes. is that Tuesday? That's gonna It'll be, be Tuesday this week because of the holiday tomorrow. So um, yeah, I encourage everybody to watch it. It's really fun. Gonzo calls in and uh, Meat Truck Mike goes on there too. And it's a lot of people from our um, our little community that goes on there. And it's, it's really fun. It's great. Yes, it is great. And, you know, just be part of this, you guys. I think good things happen to people that are part of this. I got engaged mm -hmm. and I'm going on a date with five people. Okay. <laughs> if you want that kind of life. Join Kermit and friends. Like, what are you yes. doing? What are you doing, people? Um, let's do a closing prayer with Jimmy the Christian. Yeah, uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. Uh, Father God, thank you for an amazing show today. Thank you for filling us with some hope today. A lot of us came in today not knowing what was going to happen. A lot of us came in today feeling a little funny about things and feeling like maybe there wasn't enough hope and enough fun happening here. Well, our prayers were answered, God. Thank you so much for giving us a a really fun show. We, we, we lift up everybody who comes on the show. And Elisa tries to do that with every single person who comes on the show. Dear Lord, help her to continue to have the strength to do these shows. Help her to continue to have the strength to bring us joy every single week. Help her, dear Lord, to continue this fun adventure on Kermit and Friends. We ask all of this in the name of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Elisa, for a wonderful show. I really appreciate uh, the guest. Uh, of course, all of us are off the list. Uh, <laughs> Why are you saying that? Why are you no, saying that? No, no, no. listen, was... listen, I mean, he's a compelling character. Uh, listen, he's a compelling character. Uh, you know, uh... you know, you know, it's one thing he said that I didn't like. What did he say that he didn't like? He, he, I, th I think I heard this correctly. He's like, I'm going to hurt you at the end. Oh, he said that. He said, I'm going to break your he... heart. He said, I'm going to break your heart. For some Why reason, would he say I, that? I think he actually, I think he might have been nervous and he didn't know what to say. And he just said, you know what? I'm going to get and fall in love with you and take you out and then I'm going to break your heart. So I think he was just a little nervous. Yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah, that somebody follow up about that. If one of my producers yeah. is uh, listening, please follow up with him about that. I didn't really like that too much. Maybe he was joking. Maybe he wasn't. But if I, the fact that there's always like a half joke when people are half yeah, joking. Yeah, 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 half joke. And, half. and it makes me think that he's and, more of a player. And than obviously that. Cappy and Andy were like the third wheel, 3A, 3B. I mean, they really are on the defensive. Andy? You've got your work cut out for you now, my friend. Uh, There's too many people, but I like to watch them all fight. Okay, but this guy, you know this guy, he, he presented a very compelling case today to Elisa. And you got to, I think you got to step up your game, Andy. You got to step I'm up. I'm trying to. Are you, your Kermit, are you wearing your Kermit and Friends bracelet right now? Show me your hands. Show me your wrists. Come on. Wrists, please. Oh, no, he's going to steal Cappy's. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, well, that's good. Good for oh, you. Oh, that's All so right. sweet. I love that. Everybody's wearing their bracelet. Everybody. Um, everybody. Here you go, Andy. Quick, quick. Oh, look at that. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you in a little Ooh, bit. Cause look. I... That's my arm, not Andy's. Oh, Ooh, everybody. Man. Wow. What I a great. Know, not yours. That's what you meant to say. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so uh, we're going to end the show now. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you to the people that are supporting Kermit and Friends, producing Kermit and Friends, writing Kermit and Friends, being a guest on Kermit and Friends. I appreciate you so much. Uh, please join Wheezy on the wrap-up show. Do you want to be on the wrap-up show, you guys? Well, he, hi. He, he can be. Hi. Do you want to be hi. on the wrap-up? Hi. hi. Don't be hi. crazy. Sorry. What's he doing? What's what's going on? He's just what's, being wait, crazy it, with put it, you. Put it back on him before for a second. Hey, what's, what's going on? Nothing. Just hanging out at your door every Is day. <laughs> at my door? You're not at my door right now. Yes, we are. Knock, knock. Come <laughs> in. Let us come in. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yes, you're funny. Well, are you guys having a good day? Yeah, great day. I pretty much, I woke up very early again, like 6 a.m., and then I went back to sleep at like 8, and I just woke up. So I want to go out to lunch with you, though, baby, please. Yes, okay, we can do that. I was mad this morning, but we didn't get into a fight. I was just expressing myself. Wait, yeah. what, baby? You're not ISIS, are you? No, I'm not ISIS. Okay, somebody said you're ISIS, and I just had to make sure. 
No, I'm not. You're not Listen. training nanobots? No. Who's talking to? Who thinks that you're ISIS, Andy? This girl. Her name is Nanobot. And I woke up in the middle of the night. There's always someone new in my bed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Gucci came back. But it wasn't her. It was this. She's up. Go say, go bring her up. Nanobot. Nanobot. No, 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 no. Here, here. Go. All right. I'm ending the show, you guys. But uh, I want to introduce you to her. To okay. Okay. That's fine. I'll just. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Elisa. Nice to meet you. Hi, Elisa. Are you a friend of Andy and uh about Cap? She's, yeah, I'm I'm one of Captain's co stars. She's one of the biggest co stars of the Captain's <laughs> Content Show. All right. Well, I look forward to meeting you and uh you seem very nice. Yeah. Are you an ISIS terrorist, Fred and Nanobots? I don't think she is. But I don't believe but, so. Like they they just the recruits are just normal people. And like they don't have there's no really way to separate them like by just by looking at them unless you can see the nanobots coming off of their bodies, which is really hard because they blend in really well. Bitch. <laughs> okay, well I'd like to avoid that today. <laughs> so we'll just have a nice lunch, right? No. Do you have a <laughs> Fuck you. Just Lisa. because you asked, I'll stop. Oh, but I want a hit of that joint. Do you, do you have anything you want to share, like a poem or a song or anything like that? I make zines, but they're all about counterterrorism. I do have a poem I want to share, actually. Okay. It's a little poem I wrote with the help of my great friend, Elisa Jordana. Okay. Me and her wrote it yesterday. I was supposed to put music to it, but, you know, I've been really, I was kind of tired from going to the beach and, you know, just driving around my RV, picking everybody up. So I had some rest, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to put some music to it. Okay. But I wrote it. I wrote it. Um, it's a, it's a little it's a little love poem that me and Elisa Jordana wrote about Andy Dick. Not not nothing. No no real feelings about uh, each other involved at all. But it goes like this. Thank thank you for helping me out with it. By the way, Elisa, it was it was. You're about, welcome. Uh, is Elisa Jordana? I give you my heart. I know it means nothing, but it's a good start. That's my part. And then she and then Elisa joins in the song. She says. I don't want to trust you quite yet because I don't want to be crying on stream like Manette. <laughs> like Manette, you don't want to trust him quite yet. He cries about, uh, yeah, that's what I do to women. I left them, I let I let, I leave him lonely and crying. Well, that's exactly what Alex said to me also. So we're just going to avoid men altogether and we're just going to hang out uh, as a group, right? Right. We're homies. We're just homies that, you know, casually have uh, sexual encounters with each other. Right, Andy? We don't have sexual encounters with oh, each other. Okay. We really don't. You know, people already think that about me and you. You can't start that because it's not I know. People will believe a lot of things. Let's go take an HIV test together again. All right. All right. Well, I like the poem. Love you, everybody. Kermit and friends every, every Sunday morning. <laughs> Subscribe. Oh all right, all right. You're you're okay. You're fine. You're just you're acting very weird right now. <laughs> Here we go. Right? What do you want me to do? I read the stupid fucking poem like you asked me to. What else do you want? I don't know. When you were talking about sexual encounters, were you talking about between you and her? Between me and everybody else in the world. That's not you and her. No. Well, you you do have a lot of girls. Oh my gosh! There's this. Am I allowed to say that? No. Hey. Well. Oh, hi. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying about how there's cartoon symbolism and terrorism, and it's like something that I think the public should be aware of. Okay, so you make everybody aware of that. Make everybody aware of that on our wrap-up show. We have no more time right now, you guys, for anything else. Nothing else, okay? We, we did it all today. We had a great day. Um, I love the show. Thank you so much for um, to Alex Stein for coming on. He was incredible, incredible, incredible. I'm actually curious what Charmin thinks. Charmin, uh, Alex Stein, what do, you, what do you think of that guy? Uh, great energy between the two of you. I'm looking forward to the video of dinner. That's going to be a lot of fun. I like people who try to sit in the middle and get people laughing from both ends. So I think it was great. What happened with your coworker, though? 
my coworker was supposed to come on and he was supposed to talk to you and also Alex and he left. He was here for a very long time, but he, he left and he said, this is not for me. That's what he said. So it was bad. I don't know. Before you go, before you go, can I see that list? Because I think I was number six. Let me see. Where am I? I'm number four. Okay. I'm not even in the top three. Hey, can I see that joint? It's just because of the chicken Andy stuff, Andy. You you like chicken more than me, and I know it. So No, 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 no. You don't know what's been going on. You talk I, about chicken Andy a lot. I'll tell you at lunch. No. Baby. Look, can we talk about this stuff at lunch? Is part of the talking gonna be no more chicken Andy? Let's talk about that. If that's what you want, yeah. I I'm trying. I'm, I'm being even more extreme. I'll tell you. Ready for to go to lunch? Yes. Everybody watches all this stuff, so you know. I want. I want to tell you in person. Baby, you're getting. You're going down the rabbit hole of reading people's comments. I'm not. I was just wondering. Like, I, it's just funny that you're. You know, I, I hear you talking about Chicken Andy. So it's just, I that's what I hear. So it just seems like you have Chicken Andy on the mind a lot. You bring it up. I never do. Oh, you don't? Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'll go to lunch with you. Yeah, this is my list. Uh, I crossed out the, the bad frog. <coughs> and then I put some other people. So if anybody wants to take a screenshot of this list. Um, and talk about it in the wrap-up show. It's going to be a great wrap-up show with Charmin and Wheezy today, and whoever else wants to join. Andy, you could even join as well. Um, and they're just going to talk about everything that happened here because we're so lucky that so many people are involved. That's the beauty of the show. Uh, you can always be a part of it at any time and reach out to us, and we'll help you. And uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. And uh, I'll see you on the wrap-up show and next week on Kermit and Friends. Thank you.